Good evening and welcome to the annual budget meeting of the Town of Fairfield. It is Monday, uh, May 6th. Will the clerk please call the roll? Steve Chessery? Here. David Fogel? Here. Nancy Leskowitz? Here. Amy O'Shea? Here. Bill Gerber? Here. Aaron Lopez? Here. Eric Newman? Here. Cindy Perham? Here. Heather Dean? Present. Alex Durrell? Here. Matt Jacobs? Here. Sharon Pastilli? Here. Alice Kelly? Here. Phil Pierce? Here. Bonnie Botelli? Here. Marcy Spolier? Here. Josh Garskoff? Here. Joe Siebert? Here. Ruth Smay? Jay Wolf? Matt Ambrose? Here. Steve Barrett? Here. Hannah Gale? Lisa Havey? Present. Lauren Bobby? Here. Mark McDermott? Here. Jill Vergara? Here. Karen Wackerman? Here. Carrie Burcham? Pamela Icono? Here. Christine Messina? Here. Peter Solomon? Here. Brian Farnan? Here. Drew Georgiatis? Here. Dorian Herron? Here. Margaret Fortin? Here. Sam Cargill? Here. Michael Hurley? Present. Frank Petit? Here. Eric Sundman? Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Before we begin, I believe there's a motion to be made. <laughs> Representative Wackerman. So there's been a motion to suspend the RTM rule to regulate that uh, limits one li limits us to one political caucus for this meeting. Uh, the motion's been seconded. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Item two, to hear and consider an appeal by the Department of Public Works and the first selectman from the following vote of the Board of Finance pertaining to the Public Works Operation 5030 uh, budget to reduce capital asphalt paving account 57002 by 700,000, requested capital asphalt paving 2.7 million, Board of Finance approved 2 million. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Representative Dean, seconded by Representative Lopez. Um, this is, we don't typically have appeals. The way we're gonna handle this is the appellants are going to address the RTM first, and then I'll allow the chair of the Board of Finance to address the RTM, um, and then we'll open it up to comment from the body and then public comment. Um, both the Department of Public Works and the chair of the Board of Finance um, gave me a similar estimate as to time. Uh, both requested more than 10 minutes, which I'm going to allow, uh, but when it turns to public comment and comment from the body, we're gonna stick to our uh, strict time limits. Um, is there a point of information, Representative Hurley? Yes. So the, the point of information is whether we will allow further comment from the RTM, and we will if there is comment from the public. So with that, I'll allow the first selectman to speak first to the appeal. Thank you. I'm here to ask you to please consider the restoration of the $700,000 to the DPW paving budget. Last September, the Board of Finance approved $600,000 to be added to the paving budget to address some very significant road work that Southern Connecticut Gas had initiated in the beach area, leaving many of our roads in distress. The funds were available at year end as we were closing the books. This additional funding was certainly appreciated by DPW. DPW recognized the severe revenue constraints our town has faced with cuts to the municipal, municipal aid over the past few years. 
Public Works has been able to modify their annual maintenance approach to help the town get through these challenging times. DPW put together a budget request of $2 million for the fiscal 2020 budget to address the annual maintenance issues in paving our 270 miles of roads. In January, I discussed with DPW if additional funds would be helpful since the Southern Connecticut Gas Project continued to expand their footprint of roads being cut up to install high pressure lines and the 600,000 was not expected to cover all the needed repairs uh, that had uh, when they accepted the fund and they accepted the funding. During the spring months, Southern Connecticut Gas has continued to identify roads to expand their upgraded lines. We have an opportunity now to restore $700,000 to the budget to give DPW the resources to address much of the additional line roads expansion. If approved, DPW can move ahead. If denied, DPW will operate with the $2 million reduced amount, balancing normal maintenance with additional repairs to the Southern Connecticut gas roads. This restoration gives DPW a chance to move forward this year rather than waiting for next year's budget request and slowing the responses down to our residents. Thank you for consideration. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Joe Michelangelo and Scott Bartlett to take us through that. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so I'll give some background on paving in general. Uh, Scott Bartlett will give some more uh, specific uh, information on our paving plan, how we make our decisions, the type of paving we do. And we have a consulting engineering firm, Beta, uh, Conrad Ledger, just give us some, uh, some uh, context of how we, uh, how we do in the industry compared to other communities. So when we talk about uh, our road network, uh, you've heard this before, our roads are 275 miles. When we count in our parking lots, we plan for 288 road miles uh, for planning purposes. Now our asphalt roads, so hot mix asphalt, that's the stuff that's produced in local uh, plants. And basically it's stone and sand and the stuff that glues it together is uh, liquid asphalt or bitumen oil. So the way it's made, it's, it's heated to 300 degrees. Uh, it's trucked to job sites. It's put in a paving box, spread on our road, compacted, cools, and you can have a road in the day. Uh, the liquid asphalt that we use is a petroleum base, just like any other oil. And you see from the slide, it's the lowest of the lowest in the in the, the chain of crude oil. So it's the crudest of the crude oil. And what has happened over the years is as refining process, refining processes have re improved, uh, much of the, the, uh, the, the oil from the tar sands is used for bigger and better purposes. So before when we got all the liquid asphalt from the tar sands, now it's being used for kerosene, for diesel fuel, for jet fuel which means it affects our prices, so the price has gone up considerably. Uh, and also the quality has gone down over the years too. So the, uh, so the, you know, the, the asphalt that you see on our road, it's an elastic product, it expands, it contracts. So you see the rating, it's rated for extremely high temperatures and extremely low temperatures. That's in Connecticut, if we were in Maine, you'd see a different PG used. If we're in Georgia, you see a different one there. So when, when I say that, you know, that Asphalt's not as the good old days. What does that mean? Well, it's more brittle. We get more cracking. At the higher temperatures, we get bleeding. Oxidation means it turns grayer faster. And it takes fewer of those uh, expansion and contraction cycles before we start to see cracks. It fatigues easier. So because the price of liquid asphalt's gone up, along with energy prices, labor costs, and other economic fast factors, Hot mix asphalt is up there in price, close to $100 a ton, and once again, it's subject to escalations. Uh, so the asphalt that we see on our roads, it's not a structural material. Basically, it's a coating on top of our road base. Uh, so what we do, so with the pavement is fairly stable, as long as you keep the asphalt in good condition, it, uh, it, it stays intact. Once you develop a crack, it develops more cracks and more cracks. And I may have, may have said this before, but if you get a, a cracked road or a cracked driveway, you know, I, I could go there with a crowbar and I could, with my hands, destroy a, a road. So if I could do it, when you get 
two degree winters and extreme heat and cold, that's how a road falls apart. So one of the things we've done So previously, the old mantra was we'd spend about 80% of our paving dollars on good old hot asphalt and use the other 20% on pavement techniques like chip seal and micro seal and crack seal. And us and the industry in the last 10 years has shifted away from that example, uh, largely because of the price of asphalt and the quality of asphalt. So the industry has gone to more, let's maintain our existing pavements instead of milling them and paving them every 10 years. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Scott Bartlett for some additional info. Thank you, Joe. Um, thank you, RTM, for the opportunity to talk about paving, which is near and dear to the DPW lifeline. Um, this is kind of a teaser slide. We call it a tale of two cities. Um, the yellow line is actually the divider, and we're going to visit this slide later in the presentation. Just keep in mind, look at the condition of the road, and again, later in the presentation, we'd like to delve into it a little deeper. Many people may have heard of this before, but essentially you have a pavement deterioration curve. And to dovetail back into what Joe was talking about with skyrocketing prices, asphalt not only costs more, but it's not lasting as long. So what we've done is we've changed our approach entirely so that we do more pavement preservation treatments. We evaluate roads, it's considered the right treatment at the right time for the right road. And the first four scales are all those type of treatments, crack sealing, micro sealing, slurry sealing, chip sealing. That's where we're getting our best bang for our buck. The middle tier, the five through seven, is where we're doing recycling, we're doing some mill and fills, which is grind out the old asphalt, add some new asphalt. Those are rehabilitation dollars. The last one, which we try to avoid, is full depth reclamation, reconstruction dollars. Extremely expensive, we don't want to burden the town with that type of of dollars, so we get those out of our vocabulary. It's one thing to understand the plan, but how to make the plan work. So we want to give you a confidence of what we do. So we break into three districts for our snowstorms. We utilize that same approach for flooding, for windstorms, and our pavement management. We feel it's better to have one person looking at 100 miles of road in the network instead of one person responsible for 288 miles in the network. The value this brings is that same foreman is addressing a snow complaint in the winter. He's observing an icing condition. He's noting that pavement condition. So even though he's not out there to look just at the pavement or to look at a snow complaint, he's taking that information in. He's constantly bringing that information back to us. We survey the roads twice a year. We survey them at the end of every season, so that would be our fall. And what we're doing is upgrading our system see what we've accomplished, and we're projecting ahead what we're going to do in the spring. The reason we go back out in the spring is winter causes us our most damage. The freeze-thaw cycle is brutal in New England. So we need to have a plan in the fall, but maybe you know, moderate that plan come springtime once we see what the winter has done to us. I'm proud to say, and you as board members should be proud to say, you've helped us with funding because that is not in our town. That is a reconstruction candidate and we don't have roads like that. We'd like to believe these are our roads, preservation candidates, where we can utilize those top four items in the curve to maintain our roadway. Again, make good roads better. Don't let them decline to a point where we're coming back and asking for more money to rebuild the infrastructure. The way we work it is it's not only that we're evaluating it, it's not only that we believe in the system, but we're out there actually responding with the treatments. So our managers have been trained not only in terms of the road identification, but they've been trained in terms of what each treatment does, how it reacts well, the cost factors of that treatment. And what we'll do is we'll go out there and after a road was paved, we might be out there in three or four years installing a crack fill. Maybe two or three years later, we're going to be a, putting a slurry or a chip seal on that same road. Three or four years later, year eight or year 10, possibly a single micro or a double micro. The point being is that we're constantly out there checking the roads, putting these seals and treatments to continue to protect the investment we made initially when we paved it. And if we're doing that right, 
we're avoiding those bigger years, year 20, year 25, where we have to go in and actually rebuild the roads. One of the concepts we use is actually um, from the Federal Highway Administration, widely used by not only towns, but by many counties and many states in the United States. And essentially, we own 288 miles in our infrastructure, and we need to maintain that level. And how you maintain that level is you essentially look at the years you're gonna add back to your network. And how you come up with that is a pretty simple dynamic. We basically look at a treatment that we're gonna do, and it's assessed for how many years it's supposed to last. So let's take a chip seal. If our goal is to put 288 uh, life miles back into our network, and we have a chip seal, we're gonna do 10 miles of chip seal and it's supposed to last six years. We take the 10 miles accomplished, the six year longevity, and that's 60 miles we're adding back to our goal of 288 for our network. That gives us a great benchmark year in and year out where we're standing and how you know, we're doing. This is essentially one of the worksheets. It again shows your reconstruction dollars at the top, which we avoid, rehabilitation in the middle, pavement preservation on the bottom. This is a sample year, this was 2018, actually what we accomplished, again keeping in mind goal of 288, accomplished 278. While I might be disappointed we are 10 miles off the mark, it was the preceding two years, 2017 and 2016, that we surpassed the mark. We had almost 80 miles added above our 288 in one year, 31 miles the previous year. So in a three year period, we gained 110 miles and lost 10. Our net overall increase was 100 miles. So when people say, well, Scott, you sat in front of the board and you took $1.5 million. I did. Coming off of these years, Mike said we had uncertainties in the state budget. Can you do road work and not fall behind with less? And the answer was, yes, we could. We went into 2019 with 1.5 million. Now I thank Jim Walsh and the Board of Finance because one of the unknowns was all the utility work. They supported us and they gave us $600,000 because as much as I love all these seals we do, seals are not gonna go in after the gas company rips up our roads and bring that road back to life. We have to go in, we have to mill that road, we have to put an asphalt overlay. Then, after that asphalt overlay, go back to our principles of crack sealing and, and maintaining that road. So again, thank you to the Board of Finance. That 600 k is greatly appreciated, and I don't wanna scare you, but it's not even half what we need with the additional utility work that has been added to this town of late. In fact, we're at 17 miles right now road construction just on the utility front, not to mention impacts from last September when the Rooster River flooded, we lost some roads, we had to repair those roads. So there's a lot of moving dynamics between utilities and mother nature that we can really use that extra funding. I told you that we'd revisit this slide. Again, I feel you should be as proud as I am of this slide. This is the city of Bridgeport and the town of Fairfield, the town we love. We did a mill and fill in 2004, curb to curb. We split the road, the boundary line was the double yellow. Here was the difference, 2010 Fairfield DPW installed a, a crack seal followed by a micro seal. Bridgeport opted to do nothing. 2018, we're on our second generation of a crack seal and 2019, we'll be installing our second micro. So in 15 years, we feel our road is in much better shape than their road. I'm not sure if you noticed the difference between 216 and 2019, but I could see in that three year, three year difference just the amount of potholes they patched. In fact, Bridgeport invested $200,000 in a Bridgeport in a pothole patching machine. And the media called me and goes, what do you think about Bridgeport's $200,000 pothole machine? And my reply was, my town gives me $200,000 to fix the roads so we don't have potholes. We are serious about what we do. We're very educated on what we do. We, we appreciate any support because the dynamics have shifted. Two million was an adequate number, but when Mike came to us, in light of all the utility, in light of all the utility work, the 700,000 could be used 
to get these roads back in shape when the utilities leave our town. And yes, this is a throwback from Rich White, my dear friend retired, but this was a slide he had in his pre presentation a decade ago. So I'll note that that's not in Fairfield because we don't have people fishing in potholes because we don't have them. I, I thank you for your time. We'll open up to questions later, but um, I'd really just love to leave you with one thing, which is if it's not a scare tactic, but if we don't fund it this year, I don't know what the number is going to be like next year. Thanks, Scott. Um, thanks for everybody for the opportunity tonight to uh, present to you. So uh, I was asked to participate in uh, this conversation and discussion um, on the pavement management program because I'm an outsider looking in. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a background of who I am and what we do, uh, BAIT is a full service engineering firm with one of our core disciplines being GIS and asset management. Uh, so we work in over 140 communities throughout New England on maintaining and developing pavement management programs. Um, so we're relied on by organizations to teach pavement management theory and, and uh, process. Um, I've taught at uh, courses for uh, organizations such as APWA, uh, T2 Center in, at UConn, Connecticut, uh, Bay State Roads in Massachusetts, and different highway associations all around the region. Um, so uh, Scott and Joe actually asked me to come in to take a look at their program. I don't maintain the town's uh, pavement management program right now. Um, but they wanted me to look at the work that they've done and take an outsider's look and observation um, and, and use my uh, professional knowledge to give an assessment of the program. So uh, even though we don't maintain the town's pavement management program, we do have some familiar familiarity with the town. Uh, we've worked with DPW and Highway on a couple different projects. Uh, first off, uh, we've helped them track the, um, the progress they've made. Uh, with their pavement management program, meaning uh, we've uh, created some GIS maps and kept some records of the construction history that they've uh, compiled. And then uh, we also helped them on a project to uh, optimize their plow route mapping. Uh, so that, that has taken place over the past couple of years. So again, even though we don't maintain the pavement management program, we do have familiarity with the town. So uh, some of this might be a little bit repetitive to what Scott talked about, but I thought it was good um, to kind of uh, talk about some of the things that we um, talk to our clients about, about what we tell them they should be looking to do. Uh, the first thing that we tell them to do when we work with the town is uh, to think proactively rather than reactively, and, and as Scott said, keep good roads in good condition. So this is that pavement deterioration curve again. Again, these are my slides from the presentations that I do. Uh, some of them look very similar. Um, so this is what happens when uh, you act reactively to a roadway over time. So on the left-hand side here, you can see that this is a roadway condition, a 100 at the top, a roadway in very, very good condition, and then a zero at the bottom, a roadway in very, very poor condition. And then at the bottom, that graph shows uh, time in years. So you can see over time, if you act reactively, a roadway is going to start out at the top of this curve. It's going to drop to the bottom after about 20 years. That's the life expectancy of an asphalt roadway here in New England. And then you're going to do a substantial repair to that roadway to get it to the top of the curve and back down again after another 20 years. So over a 40-year period, you're going to do two repairs to that roadway at a cost of $60 to $80 per square yard over that 40-year period. Now, if you act proactively rather than reactively, um, this is what's going to happen. So you're going to see this time frame go along uh, on this graph. So after about five years or so, you're going to do routine maintenance. After about 10 to 12 years, you're going to do some sort of preventative maintenance. That's those surface treatments that Scott talked about. Again, after a 15 to a 20 year period, you're going to do a routine maintenance again. And then after about 20 to 25 years, you're going to reset that roadway, uh, the surface of that roadway with probably a mill and overlay. You can see this time goes along over that same 40 year period. And over that time period, you're going to touch that roadway seven times at a cost of $26 per square yard. So not only are you saving money, but take a look at the difference between those two curves, is you're going to notice that the roadway condition stays in much better condition over that time frame. So again, acting proactively rather than reactively, you're saving money and you're keeping roads in better condition. So uh, the other thing that I want to talk about uh, in terms of uh, things that we do for communities is uh, I always get this question, especially in a public forum, what is the right number for our town to maintain our roadways? So again, we don't keep uh, the pavement management program here in Fairfield, but uh, this is an example town of, of what we typically do, the analysis that we run for them. Uh, and the reason I'm showing this here 
is because that remaining service life calculation that Scott talked about and how he monitors his program on a yearly basis, it's the same exact equation that we use to create those forecast models. So just to kind of back up what Scott was saying in, in his presentation, uh, that's an industry standard for calculating the, the roadway network and how to project moving forward, what, what type of pro, uh, progress you're making with your roadway network, and we use it in our calculations as well. So uh, just uh, independent observations, an overview of what I see in the program here. Um, Scott talked about all the different treatments that uh, they use here in the town. Uh, uses all the tools in the toolbox. We call it the pavement uh, repair toolbox. Uh, he's using all those and, and uh, the DPW is using all those. Uh, priority on keeping good roads in good condition. Uh, very important as a pavement management concept. Uh, and then using indi industry standards for monitoring uh, the performance of uh, the roadway network. Uh, and that remaining service life is what we talked about. So my conclusion in that is uh, the program, even though I don't know all the details of the program, uh, it has the framework for a successful program uh, with proper funding. So with that, we'll take any questions that you have. Okay, so now I'm gonna invite the chair of the Board of Finance to come up um, and speak to the appeal as well. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, everyone, for having us here this evening. And thanks for the presentation. It was very informative. I wish we had seen some elements of that during our budget discussion. We did not have the benefit of some of the elements of the presentation. I, want to, I think it's good if we level set both the facts and the history of paving in the town for the last several years. First of all, DPW requested $2 million in their budget for this year for paving. We actually approved their budget request of $2 million. The first selectman increased that request by $700,000 or 35% over the department request. We reduced it back to the original department request of $2 million. That vote was 8-0 to 1. The one abstention 
was a conflict of interest, so he abstained from the vote. The hard cut was $200,000. That's $200,000 that would not come back to this budget. The $500,000 was actually a transfer to contingency, pending a detailed plan that we asked for. Now, we're not asking what roads you're trying to pave, we're not asking where those roads are. We're not asking any of that. We're asking how are they prioritized, what methodologies are going to use, how many miles are we getting done, how long until we do the entire town, issues like that. How are the roads faring with all the different, I think there were eight or nine different methodologies listed up there. How are the roads doing under that? We have none of that information as we move forward. Let's take a look at the history. In the last 10 budget cycles, the Board of Finance has not reduced the DPW paving request one dime. In fiscal year 20, the Board of Finance approved the original request, as I said before, and put $500,000 into contingency, waiting for a detailed plan. Now, I want to point out something that Mr. Bartlett was very eloquent on. He talked about how difficult the winters are and how a lot of the paving gets done in the spring and how after the winter that's when the money is spent. We've got more than enough time to release the funds from contingency, contingency based on a plan that they present for these funds to be available for next spring to help with the utility work and any other work that needs to be done. And to top it off, and Mr. Bartlett also alluded to the fact that we gave them an additional $600,000 in the fall of 2018 that's being spent right now. That came from surplus because we had a great year and we were able to move the funds from surplus and top off the funding request to take care of the utilities. I'm pleased to pronounce, with help or announce, with help from Mr. Mayor, that right now our surplus is running at close to $3 million for the current fiscal year. Meaning, not only would we have $500,000 left in contingency, we would most likely have additional funds left in surplus if the plan warranted those additional funds to be spent in the spring of 2020. So no one is trying to cut paving investment in this town. What we are trying to do is say we need a longer term plan in order to resolve our concerns. Look at the last history. Look at how all over the map we are in our paving. Look at how far the department requests adjusts from year to year. Now, what are we comparing that to? What's it based on? Can we go to the next slide, Mr. DeWitt? In 2011, and I happened to be on the Board of Finance at that time, we had our most recent current DPW long-term paving plan presented. The plan, the type of plan that I was just discussing. Now, that was put together by Mr. Bartlett and the prior DPW director. It started in fiscal year 2011. At that time, at the request of the RTN, some of you might have been here, many of you not, we moved the paving investment from capital expenditures into the operating plan in that year. That was step one. Step two, the very well put together plan at that time, proposed a required funding of $3.75 million per year. Could you go back a slide for a second, Mr. DeWitt? We've never hit that number. We've never come close to requesting that number. Go back, please, Mr. DeWitt. Now, what is our average requested spend bank? $2.5 million. If you take the $2 million that we've already approved, you take the $500,000, we've put in contingency, voila, 
we're at 2.5 million or the requested average over the last 10 years. If you look at the average paving budget has been for the last 10 years, it's been 2.1 million. We're at 2 million. If you look at what the actual spend has been, it's been about 2.2 million. We're right in the ballpark. This is nothing different than what we've done for the last 10 years. This is not a reduction, this is an approval of the department's requested budget and a request for a more detailed plan to show where we're going in the future so we can better budget the long-term impacts of paving to the town and to the budget. Next slide, please. I've heard it said that Board of Finance might be micromanaging this, and I want to address that right off the top. Number one, one of our responsibilities on the Board of Finance is to make sure that financial controls, internal controls, are in place. It's part of our financial stewardship function. That is exactly what we are requesting here. What is the plan? Why are we spending the money? How are we spending it wisely? What's the payoff? And what's the cost over the next number of years? When we look at this, this is what we've done and put in place as a board in the last 10 years. A police car replacement plan, a fire department vehicle replacement plan, the HSR course enhancements. That was a 10-year, $125,000 to $150,000 a year investment, which, oh, by the way, by following that plan, we won all sorts of awards and were named one of the best municipal courses in the state last year, and the golf course makes money and returns a profit to the town. That's what long-term planning can do. Improve the asset, and make us money. In this case, improve the assets, improve your roads. We do an annual capital planning summit. Guess what that's all about? Long-term planning. OPEP pension retirement funding plans. All about plans and funding. Fund balance policy plans. That has helped us keep our AAA bond rating. It's solved our issues with the internal service fund. It's exactly the financial propriety and due diligence we need to do for all our plans. And lastly, our long-term bonding policy. The Board of Finance also has held funding in contingency. We did that in IT for several years when we had some concerns. And we've done that almost every year when funding our contracts that are unsettled and we don't have visibility and we push it into contingency and wait for the settlement. Mr. Mayor does a calculation, we move the funds. It takes one meeting, it's very easy for us to do. Once, we are comfortable that our financial stewardship obligations have been fulfilled. Next slide. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up because it is a talking point, it is an area of concern, it is something we're dealing with. These are some of our observations and our considerations. And one of the reasons why we've increased our due diligence in this area and that we have our professional skepticism heightened. We've had inconsistent paving requests and information from DPW leadership. You saw this in the last slide, or a couple of slides ago. You saw the history over the last 10 years. We've had requests and discussions are inconsistent year over year, sometimes within months. Hey, we need 1.5 million. Oops, we need 2.1 million. Hey, we need 2 million. Oops, we need 2.7 million. That inconsistency gives us agita, concern, and raises our skepticism. It has, we have not been presented with a revised paving plan. The closest we actually got was what you guys saw today, and that was pretty good. It wasn't a plan, it didn't detail out how much we need, didn't detail how much of each of those different nine subsections we're gonna do over the next number of years, didn't tell us exactly how many miles you're gonna get a year, but it was a pretty good discussion. I have to say it was pretty well done. And I was also very happy that they had an expert in here. I'd like to know how much he was paid and how we paid for that. But I'm saying that that was good and it was well done. Now, the other item we have 
We had the issues with pile management. Chairman Flynn, Chairman Flynn, I don't find this comment um, and the rest of the comments on this slide to be germane to the issue, which sure is it whether is. it's, sure don't it interrupt is. me as the chair, I don't find it to be germane to the issue of whether or not the appeal should be sustained to restore $700,000 to the capital paving account. I won't speak to it directly, but I will speak to the fact that our observations and considerations of these two issues raise our sense of concern and our professional skepticism over whether we should be raising a budget by 35% from what the original ask was and over 50% from what last year's budget was without taking these into consideration. Now, if you don't think that's germane, we have a different this, uh, idea of what germane to the so discussion is. You have but my, you have my ruling. You can yeah. move on. I'm done. Mr. DeWitt, here's the department funding request is fully funded. The first selectman's paving budget was adjusted by the BOF. The entire cut is $200,000 and $500,000 is in contingency. Thank you. So with that, we'll open it up to the body for comments and questions. Is there any discussion? Representative Wackerman. Karen Wackerman, um, District Nassau. Yes, Karen Wackerman, District 7. You hearing me? Okay. Um, so I just I wanted to respond. Uh, first, I want to uh, say that our caucus is, I think, unanimously in favor of granting this appeal and restoring the seven hundred thousand um, dollars. I, th I think that slide that, um, that uh, Mr. Flynn was just showing that was being discussed was really a great example of what my, uh, my issue is with this or part of the issue. It seems like the Board of Finance feels that it needs to police the DPW for these various reasons and that's just not the function of the Board of Finance. The DPW can, can definitely make presentations to them and, and tell them what they're doing. But the Board of Finance is there to review the budget and, and approve it or not, not to police the DPW because of different things that may or may not have happened. Um, to put money into contingency and take it out of uh, the budget line is to sort of take control of the, of the nitty gritty day to day work of DPW, which really isn't the job of the Board of Finance. That's the job of the first selectman and the Department of Public Works. Um, so I think that um, there, the process that's being used of putting funds in contingency, which may or may not ever be used for p paving, they may say it's earmarked for that, but there's no, there's no process to earmark funds for that, um, is just not the way to run a town. It's not, it's not the appropriate way to run a town. Um, and I'm wondering if uh, perhaps, I'm, I'm bundling the contingency discussion in this because um, we feel very strongly that the it's not, that's not where the money belongs. It belongs as a line item in the DPW budget. And um, whether or not this appeal is granted, our, our caucus is going to move to remove that, those funds from the contingency. It's not the job of the Board of Finance to decide whether these funds need to be used by the Department of Public Works in this way. I'm wondering if, um, through you, Mr. Moderator, if the um, first selectman could explain briefly about how the contingency fund works, because that may be helpful to folks. Mr. First Selectman. Oh, thank you. I'm going to ask for the uh, Mr. Mayor, our CFO, to listen along to what I'm saying, just to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm saying it on it accurately here. But basically, the contingency is, is put in a budget, as many of you in your companies and other organizations would have, uh, for those unknown costs that may come along. Uh, we do use it in addition uh, to reserve money for contract negotiations. Those are kind of planned content that is worked out with the finance department and myself in terms of how much to put in there. We have a, a typically what we call a normal contingency that's put in there. 
any movement out of that normal contingency or any other funds in contingency is a line item transfer. And as our charter says, any line item transfer must be approved by the Board of Finance. So in order to move any money out of contingency for any purpose, it would have to be approved by the Board of Finance. When it's in contingency, we do not have earmarks or a way to tag things. So it technically um, can be used for anything that comes up throughout the year that gets approved. Is that what you were looking for? Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. So I, um, we would l really like to see the 700,000 restored for paving. It's very important as, as uh, the DPW folks just explained. They do a terrific job. They win awards nationally uh, for their, the job they do paving. And we need that in our town. We need to not have potholes. So um, we very strongly ask that, that um, the RTM approve the, um, pass the amendment. And uh, whether or not it's passed, we will be moving to uh, remove the 500,000 from contingency as it's not the Board of Finance's job to allocate this. Thank you. Further questions or comments from the body? Representative Pistilli. Mr. Moderator, through you, I'd like to ask a question of Mr. Michelangelo and Mr. Bartlett. Okay. Um, so uh, could you uh, let us know, um, in general, the utility work uh, that's happened over the last 12 months, um, if we've seen the same level of utility work in, at any time in the last 10 years, and approximately how many either square yards or miles of road uh, we feel will be affected, we think will be affected by by you know, all this ongoing improvement. Um, so as we speak right now, there's 16.88 miles of utility work in the town of Fairfield. Um, to put it in the dollars perspective, um, we have the 600,000. So we, let, me, let me see if I can do, do, do it this way. We have almost 1.2 million in play as we speak. We take the 600,000, thank you again, Board of Finance, off of that, that brings us to six. But with these other new projects, we're back to a liability of $750,000. To let you know I'm being very fair with the number, there's an additional five miles, which brings us to 22 miles of utility work. But those five miles, by virtue of the way the gas company laid out those projects, they have a five-year moratorium for residents to tap in. So I'm not displaying that number because I don't anticipate that to hit us until 2024. So real time, 17 miles, within five years, an additional five miles to make it 22, and who knows what hits us between now and 2024. In terms of the question, is this one of the banner years? Absolutely, we've never seen this much utility work. It's the age of the infrastructure, new demands on the gas company, to upgrade their existing system. That's the lion's share of the utility work. Smaller portion is Aquarion updating water mains, UI project and a sanitary project also in the queue. I will Go through me. Um, Mr. Moderator, may I? Turn up the mic. <laughs> Okay, um, Mr. Moderator, uh, through you, I'd like to ask an additional question of Mr. Bartlett. That's all right. Okay, um, Mr. Bartlett, could you also explain, um, in terms of the variability over, um, in general, that we see due to weather, or what other impacts you might see that would cause variability in the budget number that you request from the town? I know that in the last 10 years, off the top of my head, we've had hurricanes, Irene, Sandy, and then that snowstorm that was like 33 inches of snow. Um, so that, off the top of my head, from a common stand, sense standpoint, comes to mind. But there are other are there other items that you could let us know why we would see such variability in the amount that you ask for the town to pave our roads. You nailed it. The biggest variability is Mother Nature. It's mostly the winter. When you get a frost in the winter, the roads actually aren't impacted. It's 
in the spring when the frost comes out of the ground, that's when the roads suffer all their damage. Frost it basically expands the road, and then as it starts to thaw in the spring, it starts to collapse again, creating voids, cracking the pavement. In fact, I remember a few years ago being in front of the board, and Hill Farm Road was a, a big discussion, and everybody said, do you have enough money to fix it? And I said, don't judge it today. Judge it in a few months, because once we got out of the winter cycle, the road calmed down. We went in and fixed just areas of the road, and then we were able to do a less expensive overlay. So number one, it's Mother Nature. Um, number two, any type of trenching. We don't want to blame it just on the utilities. If it's, we have to go in and repair a storm line, any type of excavation on your road, whether you have a seal on that road or have a pavement, it impacts the integrity of that asphalt surface, surface. So those are our two biggest drivers, those variabilities. One thing we like about our plan is if we have a spike in asphalt this year, we can shift to more pavement preservation. Conversely, if we have good numbers in asphalt, we can turn around, pave a little more, and do less pavement maintenance. There's a variability in our budget based on, again, right road, right treatment at the right time, but costing does have its consideration. I hope that answers. Just one additional item. When we put together our request for $2 million, once again, we were coming off a year last year where it was 1.5, so we increased it 500,000, but the overall public works operations budget was a $2 million increase. So it was 15% increase. We had large increase in salaries through the new contracts, a substantial amount of capital vehicle equipment we were raising, increase in contracted services. So in, in uh, you know, so the you know the two million dollar request wasn't made in a bubble. It was made in, as a, as part of the entire public works budget, which was a two million dollar increase. Uh, so to be fair, that's what we felt was an appropriate number at that time. Further discussion or questions from the body, Representative Hurley. Michael Hurley, RTM District 10. Um, Mr. Moderator, I have uh, a few questions for Scott Bartlett and Joe Michelangelo. My, my first question is, when you're talking about the utility work and the impact on the DPW budget, could you help me understand sort of how do you determine whether just a patch is put on or is the money you're using on certain roads sort of a curb-to-curb -curb replacement? When it comes to utility work, if it's an isolated service, like if it's no grant scheme, they're not rebuilding infrastructure, but somebody moved in house number 20 and they want gas, that just gets, it doesn't impact us. The utility calls us, takes out a trench permit. We go out, we inspect it, they do a cutback, backfill and pave. Conversely, the types of projects we're dealing with where they're doing full main replacement, they have to at minimum restore the trench. We've partnered with them and gotten them to do one lane. By doing one lane, we then do the other lane of the road and it brings that whole neighborhood back to a curb to curb paving. If we miss that opportunity, they can go back and just patch the trench and then essentially, a few years from now, we'll be back in and paving the road, but instead of doing one lane, we'll be doing three quarters of it. Um, the big exception is on the gas company. Again, two types of projects. Replacement of mains, there's a high percentage of services and there's no moratorium to tie in. Most residents tie in, you can go in, repave the street. New construction has a five year moratorium. So if there's 40 houses on a street and 20 buy in, we're not going to force the next 20 over the five years to buy in. So we could pave and then you're gonna have 20 trenches in the road. So we opt not to pave until the rest of that neighborhood comes online then we wouldn't pave it. It's almost a missed opportunity for money, but it's unfortunate. We don't feel good about paving a road if it's new business and they don't have the percentage of customers to tie in. That was very helpful um, through you, Mr. Moderator. I have a follow-up question. Proceed. So I understand what you're saying, and I think that, that that's great. I think it's very important um, to have a plan where that's, that's explained. Hull's Highway in Southport, sort of north of, might have been Hull's, the entire length of Hull's Highway, but at least north of Ivy up to Hull's Farm, was repaved about 
five years or so ago. I'm sure you probably know the exact timing. And then there was a significant amount of utility work done. And I had gotten a, a number of calls from you know, the terrific constituents that I have in District 10. And people were very, very upset. And they said to me, said, Michael, why is it that the utility is allowed to come in here, tear up the road, which was recently repaved? Um, so I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's right either. So you know, I made a call over to DPW. And you know, they said, well, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at it. I'm not sure if we can really do it. But so I, I guess my concern is, is the type of paving that you're doing curb to curb when there's utility work, is, is that uniform across town? Because based on my experience on Hulls Highway, it's not. But I could be wrong here. So maybe you guys could correct me if I am. The short answer is you are correct that all new work is now split with the utilities, both water and gas, buy in and split the road. Five years ago, we didn't have that in place, but today we do. Okay, Mr. Monterey, one more, one more question? Go ahead. Okay, so just, just so I'm clear, when the work was done on Hulls Highway, it was before you put this new procedure in place for projects where there's utility work being done and a lane is cut up. So that's why that, that wasn't done. But as part of the plan, then wouldn't you go back and fix those main, I mean, particularly like Hulls Highway. Hulls Highway is the major artery, well, outside of probably Mill Hill Terrace, in the Southport section of, of Mill, the Mill Hill section of Southport. At the end of the presentation, I'll be happy to hand out the $2.7 million paving plan, which coincidentally has Hulls Highway in it. So <laughs> very interesting, very interesting. Okay, thank you very much. Further discussion from the body, Representative Georgiatis. Drew Georgiatis, District 9. Um, I have um, fabulous con um, constituents in District 9 as well. And um, I want to read from a list that um, they have been contacting me about, because a lot of this gas work is in District 9, which I'm sure um, my other District 9 representatives, Margaret Heron, I mean, Doreen Heron, uh, Margaret Weeks, and um, Brian Farnan also um, have experienced by driving around in our neighborhood. So um, I'm going to read from this. Uh, plan that Scott Bartlett sent to me, um, and I'm going to outline all the streets, and the, um, I'm going to focus on the square yards that are being impacted um, by this um, utility work. It's called Repaving Streets Due to Gas Main Installation Spring 2019, uh, Fairfield Beach Road, Lally Boulevard, 10,324 square yards, Edward Fox, Jarvis, Quincy, Sandy Way, 9,864 square yards. Um, Dwight Street, Lind, Millard, Paulding Street, Smith Street, 12,098, Crescent Street, Cummings Avenue, Forest Avenue, Long Dean, Reef Court, Whitestone Hill Court, 11,416 square yards, um, Charles Street, East Lawn Street, Veris Street, 10,944, Catherine Terrace, Howard Street, Pratt Street, 10,776, Ann Street, Catherine Terrace, Heard Street, 11,582, Carlton Street, Hollis Street, Mellow Street, Mona Terrace, Sullivan Place, 8,445, Gould Avenue, Narrow Street, Oldfield Drive, Somerville Street, 7,094, Blaine Street, um, 4,044. Now that's phase one. Phase two is my street. Phase, three, uh, phase two is Beach Road. I won't even discuss that. Um, but this is a lot of square yards, and this is all happening in my district, in District 9. Um, and this needs to be repaired. This needs to be taken care of. Um, I have had long conversations with um, Mr. Bartlett, and through you, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask Mr. Bartlett if he'd like to um, put any more information and let me know if I read his chart correctly. 
That is correct. That is phase one of this um, paving plan with the gas company. Most of the $600,000 that the Board of Finance has given us will be expended just to do phase one. We'll be doing it out of the operating budget for phase two. Thank you, and I ask you to support the, um, uh, this amendment because um, District 9 was impacted very heavily after Hurricane Sandy, um, and District 9, all these streets are in my district, and I ask you to support the uh, constituents of District 9. Thank you very much. Does DPW want to hand out that um, flyer that you referenced to Representative Hurley? He okay, might so be interested, others might be interested. Yep, so again, I'm gonna hand out the um, current funding for the $2.7 million. I would like to point out underneath that, there's an additional $151,000. That is a new water main project that we found out on April 29th of 2019. And that's why your phone should be off. <laughs> So further questions or comments from the body as we're receiving this flyer? Uh, Representative Gerber. Bill Gerber, District 2. Um, you're going to have to uh, multitask, uh, Mr. Bartley. <laughs> um, through you, Mr. Bartley. Through you to Mr. Hello? Uh, Mr. Moderator, through you to Mr. Bartlett. Um, you've touched on, um, Mr. Bartlett, you've touched on this a fair amount, but I just, if we can get into some more specifics about the 2.7 million, I would love to get a better sense for the variables in that number, sort of the, in the assumptions, and where we could end up based on, I mean, how much of that is sort of weather related and other factors where we might end up in a situation that Chairman Flynn showed up on the, on, on, uh, up on the overhead where we would be significantly under is, I mean, my, going into that, that question, my assumption has always been, having been on this body for some time, that sometimes we don't pave as much as we want to because things come up and you can push paving to the side and you can cheat it. You can cheat it in the budgeting process and you can also probably cheat it during the year if there's a massive snowstorm and you need that money for something else and you reallocate that money. I mean, that's sort of the way I believe all budgets work. You do what you have to do with the money that you have and some of the other stuff sometimes gets pushed to the side. So I'd like a sense for the numbers that Chairman Flynn put up, whether you have a sense for why those numbers were different from what you expected and where this 2.7, if we give it to you, um, where that could end up. Let's say there's no snow this year or what, where that could be or would we definitely, you know, with a high probability be able to use that based on your, your modeling of the needs for the town. To my knowledge, we have never moved paving to cover snow. We've um, reduced other line items in the budget that were less impacted, but paving dollars have historically always gone to paving. I'm not sure if everybody got the plan, but the 2.7 kind of speaks of its on its own. Um, the cover sheet is essentially the procedure we're doing in the left-hand column, the money allocated to the right-hand column. And 
everything is either on town bid or state bid. But I, I commented before about the 2.7 in a line I entered in this week. Literally, the Aquarian Water Company notified us of a two million dollar—I mean, a two-mile project at one hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars. So, when you say, "Are we okay at 2.7?" Well, right now, if you give me the 2.7, I'm 150 in the rear based on this work that's going forward this year. We might catch a break and get lucky, have some less costing items, and bring it in online, or we might fall a little behind in the network. But that's the volatility of the 2.7. There's also an, less, an escalation clause in all these bids. The asphalt escalation clause is the biggest one. And it's the oil that Joe spoke about in his presentation. It's a volatile number. It's a very high number. And we've seen that number go up. In fact, we'll be paving the Fairfield Railroad in July. And I've committed to them that the Tuesday before we do that, we're gonna reset the project. And the reason for that is I've given them worksheet after worksheet and they see the money today. The problem is you're not paving it on May 6th. You're paving it on July 8th. It resets weekly on every Tuesday. So the best commitment I can make to the board parking authority is here's the project. If you want me to proceed, we'll proceed. I can update you the Tuesday before the project in case the numbers go haywire. It's not in ours because the parking authority pays for that. We don't account for the railroad in our matrix. We don't pay for the railroad. But that's just an example. Um, I feel the years past, it's part of balancing a budget. You know, I didn't come up here. If anything, I would hope people are recognizing that we were asking for 3.7 a decade ago. We're now probably asking for 3 million, give or take, 10 years later. All the processes have gone up in cost, but our management of those processes Another question through, through you, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Bartlett. Um, so I think what I heard was, there, I mean, there, there is a variability um, in, in the, the estimate for asphalt costs. Are you at a high end or a low end or, you know, for your asphalt assumptions, where are you and how much room is there possibly to have a net positive? The program you see in front of you is the actual bid price from the state of Connecticut. It's a proven number. We use it year in and year out. To support that it's a proven number, we actually rolled out our own bid this spring. We had six local contractors bid on it. We're paying $86 a ton in place. They all came in in the 130, 140 range. It's a proven number to work. Now the risk again on the escalation, several years ago we saw it go up as much as $10 a ton. So if 86 becomes 96, that's going to impact us. In rough numbers, 17,600 square yards and a mile of road. So if it goes up 10, there's $170,000. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bartlett. I, um, yep, yeah, we're on. So, you know, having spent my, my working career and education, you know, in, in mainly in finance and accounting, there are a lot of battles, you know, that, that, that we could have, you know, where there's squishy numbers. And just, um, this isn't one of them. This isn't one of them even by a long shot, in my opinion. This is a model that is um, proven through surveying every road in this town twice a year, uh, as Mr. Bartlett explained. Um, with methodologies that are relatively certain with um, now one of the major variab variabilities in, in the model being
looking at cheated dating in the past. Um, several of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle were very angry about cheating dating in the past, and I agree with them um, for changing it uh, because we had to cut the budget and you know, they would have preferred cutting it somewhere else. And I, I understand that you now. But it is a relatively straightforward model that we're dealing with here. Still not working? Yeah. My bad breath is turning off the, uh, <laughs> um, a relatively straightforward um, model we're dealing with. It's, uh, you know, I feel, you know, now that we have the, re the request, be and I think I, I would assume that it came about because we were able to save dollars from cuts in other places. I know of one cut that wasn't very popular in another part, of but probably enabled this to happen. Um, and I, I really, truly believe it is a terrible, terrible precedent and almost a slap in the face to see something so certain and say, we don't believe you, we're suspicious of you, and we're not going to give that to you, but you're going to have to come and justify yourself for something that we all know is a formula, basically, here, uh, with very little wiggle room. So I am definitely supporting this uh, reinstating this, these dollar amounts, and I just don't understand voting otherwise. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion or comment from the body? Mr. Walsh. Good evening. Um, just to address, I wasn't planning on addressing this, but uh, Mr. Gerber, who I really respect, actually, um, some of his comments, I, I wish this whole process was mechanical. I wish we would just do a certain number of uh, miles a year. But we don't do that. Last year, we did $1.5 million. This year, we want to go to $2.7 million. There's no mechanicability to this at all. If you look at the numbers, the way it's gone, it looks like someone who's not really thinking clearly is making these decisions. We should do a certain number of miles a year. We should stick with that no matter what the oil price is because we agree that that's what we're going to do. That would be a plan, but that's not what we're doing. We've heard about it, but to have a department ask for $2 million and then to have a first selectman increase that budget. And let's look at when he increases it. He's met with this department for days, hours, and hours, and hours on their budget. And he agrees with them that $2 million is what the budget should be for paving. But somewhere down the line, sometime probably in January, he decides to add seven hundred thousand dollars. Now he said, "I know he says it's a it's a coincidence that that seven hundred thousand dollars just happens to be the same amount he cut from the board of education." Point of order. What's the point of order? That is not germane to the topic, and I think that it is um, uh, speculative and it's demeaning someone's. Uh, so the the point of order is that the comment is not germane to the topic, and I believe also that it's a violation of Robert's rules because it's questioning the motivations of a member of the body. The point of order is well taken. I'm going to sustain it and um, ask you to move along. She said that that was part of Robert's rules. She didn't. That's that's me interpreting okay. the point I, 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 of order. That's you adding on to the point of order. You have the ruling. Okay. I just want to so move, move forward. forward. That's fine. I think I made my point on that. In regards to uh, the $600,000, which the Board of Finance added after a significant conversation in October about our surplus and a request by Mr. Mayor, who came to us, to add money into paving out of the surplus budget, we had a very nice conversation with Scott because just months earlier, he swore to our body that $1.5 million was enough. We beat him up, Scotty, for about an hour that $1.5 million wasn't going to be enough. And I would say just a couple of months after that, 
we start getting requests from Mr. Mayor and others that we take some money out of surplus. That meeting happened to go to October. We had a long meeting about it, talked about utilities, what was going on. I live in Miss Georgia <coughs> District as well, although I represent the entire town. And I know how bad the roads are with that utility work that's being done. It's horrendous. So we moved $600,000 after speaking with Scotty about how much it would cost based on what Southern Connecticut Gas was going to give us. Correct? Mm -hmm. okay. So, as a matter of fact, we asked you for that plan in writing. You said you had it back at your office. We asked you, and you emailed it to me the next day. You did. It was on October 4th, and I'll give be part of the record. The moderator, copy that email. I'll give the clerk copy. It's an email from Scott to myself dated October 4th, 2018, stating, Jim, thanks again for the support of DPW, especially with paving. Attached are the spring 2019 paving plans for up to $600,000, allocated as well as possible for future 2020. Thanks, Scott. Mr. Moderator, you confirm that? If that's what the email says? It's not really my job to confirm it, but... Okay. <laughs> Scott, you presented me with these two sheets of paper, correct? I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about it. Okay. So, at the bottom of the page, you have... Mr. Walsh, please, um, if you're going to ask a question of a member of the public, please go through me. Okay, I'm going to continue to ask questions to Mr. Bartlett. Do you want me to ask every single time? You haven't asked me once to go okay. through me. I'm going to so. be asking Mr. Bartlett a series of questions. Is that all right? It's all right. You can proceed. That. No, you can proceed. Okay. And Mr. Bartlett, there's like 20 roads here. So all the roads that were what you call phase one of the Southern Connecticut Gas Paving Program? And at that point in time, based on your worksheet, you said that with what Southern Connecticut Gas was going to give you, and with them paying for half of the road, that the cost would be for 5.05 miles, half of that would be $567,885. Is that correct? And you actually also told us that you were in negotiations on a road-by-road -road basis, so that on some of the roads, actually, because they had taken new roads, you actually mentioned my road, which had just been replaced maybe three years earlier, and they were tearing it up, that they may actually pay for the full road. So it was a road-by-road -road negotiation. And on some roads, they might not give you anything, but I think you used the word Howard Street, because it was in bad shape to begin with, and they're like, well, you give us a bad road, we're not giving you even half of a new road. Correct? Yeah, very similar. And I think it's bad enough to point out that Spurning Road Street is used yep. as Reed Road, and it's not paid full width of Reed Road. Mm -hmm. Got the mic. So the document, it actually strengthens my case. The document that Mr. Walsh is working off of to show you the volatility is 31 streets back in October of 18. Today, that same project is going forward with 39 streets. Reef Road has to be taken off that list because they've already completed paving it on their dime, so we're down to 30 roads. But it shows you almost 25% of the project has changed, right? It goes from 30 roads to 39 roads. And why is that? When they ran the gas main down, they call me and they go, hey, we got a couple roads here that fell under the radar, need to be updated. Do you want us to do them? I could say don't do them. Then our residents, when they don't have gas service in the winter to run their houses, are going to call me and say, we called the gas company and they said you wouldn't let them dig our streets. So I'm allowing them to dig the streets and I have to readjust what value we can get out of those 39 roads. But again, I think it strengthens my argument of the volatility of the utility work in the town of Fairfield. One of the roads that was added to Fairfield Beach Road, right up the road over here. So on the day after Thanksgiving, Anthony Calabrese and I were in this room 
with no heat and a function that day. And it was because of a faulty gas main, low pressure gas main, getting groundwater intrusion. It wasn't serving Field Ridge Road. It wasn't serving Lolly. It wasn't serving Edwards. Those weren't in the list. Thanksgiving, it became, Thanksgiving day after Thanksgiving became a problem. Just one of the changes that we, we see every day. Speaking of Fairfield Beach Road, once again, to show how volatile it is, it's on that list and it's not going to be paved. And here's why. Gas company's willing to step up. Aquarian notified me from Beach Road to Reef Road. They're putting in a new water main. Do you want to see me pave that road? I would think not. I will get the funding from the gas company and funding from the Aquarian when they're done. They think they're going to be doing it this fall and we'll repave that road probably on two thirds or more of those two utilities cost. But again, volatility in the program. Mr. Bartlett, any of the phase one roads that you presented um, the Board of Finance with this schedule, are any of these roads you're going to have to wait five years to do without that paving that you were talking about earlier this evening? Phase one and phase two are both replacement projects, therefore a very high percentage of residential tie-in, which means we'll go forward and pave. There's no five-year moratorium on phase one or phase two. So the $600,000 that the Board of Finance gave you in October, the extra money, you'll be using that in the next 12 months to get all of those roads done after the utility work is completed? I believe we'll eclipse the 600000 by June 30th. Eclipse? We will utilize the full 600000 that the Board of Finance gave us by June 30th. Will those roads get done? Yes. Okay, so that'll be all completed. Okay, and that's not affecting the $2.7 million that, you, that, that, the, that, that is at issue tonight? That is correct. Okay, so I just want to be clear about that. Okay. And just to address something else Mr. Gerber said, we've, we've always at the Board of Finance given you exactly what you've requested. Has there been any other time that you recall? that we didn't give you what you wanted for paving? Okay. Because he mentioned that there's either a potential failure in the budgeting process, is one of a possibility, or a failure in that we just haven't paved, even though you had the money in your budget. But to me, there's no failure in the budgeting process, at least where this board that were before tonight, or the Board of Finance, because we've always given you what you wanted. So if there's a failure in regards to the paving budget, it's either with DPW not asking for enough money, or it's with the first selectman who meets with your department to come up with that, what that number is. Because we've always given you what you've asked for. You mentioned that before. You, you, know, you said, you're, we're asking for this. We're trying to get back to the $3 million number. But when you ask for $1.5 million last year, it negatively impacts your whole paving program. If you refer back to the slides that I had up, we follow the remaining service life concept. In 2018, we injected 278 miles back into the network. In 16 and 17, we ended up putting almost 31 miles and almost 80 miles. That gave us 110 miles in that three year to the positive net gain and 10 miles negative. 100 miles positive in a three year period. That directly influenced what we requested the following year along with an unknown state budget. Mike said, we don't know where the state budget is have you had some good years? Could you come in at 1.5? The department's answer was yes. We believe we can manage the infrastructure with 1.5 for that year. That wasn't setting the number to be 1.5 every year moving forward. It was our contribution to a town based on uncertainty of a state budget in three consecutive positive years. On October 3rd when we had that meeting, 
where we gave you the six hundred thousand dollars. You explain that how much bang for a buck we'd get with the, with the utilities paying for half the road, us paying for half the road. And we were in support of that program, correct? And we told you we would not only fund the six hundred thousand, but we I think I was the one who said it. You should come back because you mentioned that there was probably going to be two other utility programs that people at the utilities were talking to you about. One being the aquarium project and one being a further Southern Connecticut gas project. I believe you said it was in the Stratfield section of our town, correct? Okay. And didn't we offer our support saying you could come back to us in future years? Okay, so we did, correct? We said what we told you. When we have surplus money, we'd be willing to support that project, correct? Okay, is there mo is any money in the current budget for any utility work? How much money is in the current budget for utility work? That number equals, in the current budget, 706039 Approximately correct? Okay. So in your current budget of the $2.7 million, there's 706039 in there for utility projects, which we told you on October 3rd meeting that we would support you because they were for specific projects above and beyond your normal pay with surplus money. And we always have a surplus. A Mr. Walsh, you're well over 10 minutes. If you could please conclude now. With, so we always have a surplus because we can't be in the red. And we still plan on honoring that. And that's why this money does not, that 702000 does not need to be in this year's budget. Thank you. Further questions from the body or comments? Representative Lefkowitz. Hi, Nancy, good. Nancy Lefkowitz, District 1. Um, I'd first like to just publicly say I plan to support the uh, 700,000 reinstating that and to thank the Department of Public Works for the hard work. And this is clearly a lot of time and attention and effort, so I'd like to thank that department. But through you, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to hear from the first selectman his process on how he arrived at this number and his justification for it. Mr. First Selectman. process, the budget, annual budgeting process goes in a couple of phases. One is, is sitting, whoop, sitting down with our department heads and literally going through line by line in each budget. As we finish that process, uh, we also then go back and take a look with finance as we're pulling together the entire overall budget. We're also getting um, updated information as we go through on everything from insurance to pension, uh, to other macro costs, if you will. When we do that, we then go back and look at what else is possible. In this case, we identified um, 700,000 that we could potentially add back into paving uh, if the department needed it. So I sat down again with Joe and Scott and said, if this money's available, you know, can you use it and how would you use it? So that's kind of a, a normal part of the process. In the same way that when the budget got to the Board of Finance, there was $700,000 in additional cuts as identified by the Finance Department. So the Board of Finance had that, those additional cuts it could take because we had better information at that point than we did back in January. But it's a process that we've gone through every year uh, with the department heads. Uh, and kind of literally, as you do in the private sector, sit down and work out the budgets together, 
look at what the priorities are, and as we continue to massage it and see where there's some adjustments possible, which departments might be able to use that and what do, you, what do they need. Certainly the Public Works Department has done their job in terms of helping other departments, helping the town deal with revenue shortfalls. They've taken advantage of their good work, and if we can get back uh, and both help them out, but also deal with this ongoing project with Southern Connecticut Gas uh, in terms of the expanded footprint, that that is going to need a lot more work. And if we can apply it there, it doesn't affect the normal maintenance project that our uh, public works folks are putting together. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Representative, uh, from members who have not spoken to the item already. Representative Weeks. Sorry, Horton. <laughs> Margaret Horton, dis oh, District 9. Um, so first I just wanted to, I mean I know that paving is an issue that is important to I think all of us on this body and maintaining our roads. I remember being here at this time last year and people from across both sides of the aisle talking about the importance of paving and even voting, I think, no overall because they didn't feel there was enough money in paving. So I know it's something that's important to all of us. I want to thank um, DPW heads for the really fantastic presentation that they gave, um, incredibly informative. Frankly, I'm sort of shocked to hear such um, a level of, of, what was it, professional skepticism and concern and, and these, what at times felt like disdain for a department, department heads that have won national awards for their paving. I mean, that's really tremendous that they've done that. So I do plan to support this appeal, not only because we need the paving, that's to me is a no-brainer, but because I think as some of my colleagues brought up before, I think we need to be very careful about the precedent that we are setting here. That the job, the scope of the Board of Finance is not to micromanage department heads. And I'm concerned that if we do this where we put it into con contingency and say, oh, it's earmarked for this, even though there is, you know, if we look at kind of how the town is governed, there is no actual process for saying that we can earmark money that goes into contingency for a certain purpose. You know, I think that this is a really, you know, as I said, dangerous precedent. And, you know, this year it's okay we are you know, skeptical over paving, so we're gonna put that in contingency. Maybe next year it's recreation, maybe it's education. You know, I just don't think this is how we wanna move forward in governing our town. Further comments or questions? Representative Barrett. Steve Barrett's District 6. I rarely, if ever, talk at such things, but I was inspired to talk. I mean, it's, um, by trade, I'm a middle school teacher, so I spend my professional life taking concepts and breaking it down to the seventh grade level. So I see in front of us... <laughs> <laughs> so I see in front of us, the question is very simply this. There's $700,000 that we can give to the Department of Public Works for paving or there is $500,000 that we put into account controlled by the Board of Finance that could be used for almost anything. To me, it's an absolute no-brainer. My vote is to give the $700,000 to the Department of Public Works. Further questions or comments? Representative Iacono. Pamela Iacono, District 8. I feel there is a serious misunderstanding about what the processes and procedures are. And there are a lot of new members on this board who unfortunately don't know the history of how our town government works and what is actually precedent. You saw a presentation from the chairman of the Board of Finance and you might not have liked it or agreed with it, but there is already precedent for this. He gave you a laundry list of how and why this has happened, and no one has ever objected to this type of process before. Additionally, all of those outcomes have been to the positive for the town and have achieved exactly what they said they intended to achieve. 
If you are concerned about whether or not this money is going to be spent, the $500,000 on paving, the best place to put it is into contingency. You want to know why? Because the only way to get it out of contingency is by a vote of the Board of Finance with a motion and you will know exactly where it is spent. If you put it back in paving, there is a possibility that funds get frozen. We have big issues at the state level. And guess what repeatedly some of our lines are, one of our major lines is that gets frozen and then doesn't get spent on paving. Paving. Who then controls that line? The first selectman, and he has the authority to hold it and freeze it and not spend it. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Except I'm hearing the argument on the other side of the aisle over and over again that we don't know, and this isn't transparent, and this isn't a good idea. I'm sorry, but you're mistaken, because the most transparent way to see it and know that it is going to happen is to actually put it in the contingency because you have eight members, eight, who said they wanted to do this and this is what they were going to do with it. And the one person that abstained had a conflict of interest. So that was a bipartisan move to essentially put it in a lockbox. So that's the motion to get it out, is a motion to put it into paving. And you can spin this any political way you want. The bottom line is paving was reduced by $200,000. I'm not necessarily enthused by that, but there's $500,000 set aside and it's set for paving. And I think we ought to stop twisting this all around and have a discussion about really it's a $200,000 cut. And I appreciate Representative Barrett's breaking it down to the seventh grade level, but that's what it is, but that's the real fact. That's what it really is. So please, I implore you, learn your history. Those who don't understand history are failed to repeat it. So understand what you're voting on, please. I implore you, know what you're doing before you take your vote. Mr. Moderator, through you, I move to call the question and to go to public comment. Okay, there's been a motion to call the question. Is there a second? Second by Representative Hurley. Um, Is there, um, this, is, this requires a two-thirds vote to call the question, um, so we will do a roll call vote. Steve Chessery. The, the motion is to close debate and go to public comment. Uh, yes. So a yes is to close debate. Please. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> Dave Fogel. Yes. Nancy Lefkowitz. Yes. Amy O'Shea? Yes. Bill Gerber? No. Aaron Lopez? Yes. Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Purim? Yes. Heather Dean? No. Alex Durrell? Yes. Matt Jacobs? No. Sharon Pastilli? No. Alice Kelly? No. Bill Pierce? Pass. Bonnie Rotelli? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes. Thank you. Marcy Spolier? No. Josh Garskoff? No. Joe Siebert? No. Ruth Smay? Uh, no. Jay Wolk? No. Matt Ambrose? No. Steve Barrett? No. Anna Gale? No. Lisa Havey? No. Lauren Bove? No. Mark McDermott? Yes. Jill Vergara? No. Karen Wackerman? No. Pamela Iacono? Yes. Christine Messina? Yes. Peter Tallman? Yes. Brian Farnan? Yes. Drew Georgiatis? No. Doreen Heron? Yes. Margaret Horton? No. Sam Cargill? Yes. Michael Hurley? Yes. Frank Patisse? Yes. Eric Sunman? Yes. Bill Pierce? Yes.
right, so the, the vote was 20 yes, 19 no, so it fails. So that means that we continue to debate. Um, further questions or comments from our members? Anyone who has not already spoken? Representative Jacobs. Matt Jacobs, District 3. A couple of quick things that uh, have become pretty clear to me at this point. Um, there's some discrepancy on what contingency is. Contingency is contingency. It is controlled by the Board of Finance for what they deem it fit to be. It can only be released upon their vote. That does not mean it can only be used for paving, despite what we hear to the contrary. Second, I feel like we've gotten a pretty detailed plan at this point. Uh, I don't know if um, the Board of Finance has seen the handout that just went out to the RTM. I feel like they should take a look and then give us a second opinion on whether or not this counts as a plan. Uh, not going to go further with that. I think it's pretty clear at this point that I support the uh, sustaining of this appeal. It's pretty obvious that the DPW we have are very good at what they do. They're experts, and they have a very good plan in front of us to support, uh, support the sustainment of this appeal. Thank you. Further questions or comments from the body? Representative Vergara. Jill Vergara, District 7. I have to respectfully disagree with what Representative Iacono said. Uh, this may have been a past practice, but it's improper. According to the town charter, our first selectman is our chief executive officer. He is the manager of all of his departments. He's supposed to work with all the heads of these departments and craft a budget. This is not the role of the Board of Finance. They are not supposed to be micromanaging the department heads. And I think that it's appropriate for us to take a stand and ensure that we're using the appropriate process. Further questions or comments? Representative Dean. Representative Dean, District 3. Um, I've heard some comments on um, regarding the, um, the understanding of processes and, and, and how we do it. Uh, because there are so many new people, uh, quite frankly, I think that the, the caliber and the intellect of, and the understanding of the process in our caucus is uh, exemplary and I, I just marvel at it all the time. Um, to the point of paving, I can't believe we're arguing over paving. Here we go again. How many years have we been doing this? I can tell you that um, owning a business, living in Fairfield, paying the taxes that I do, when I pull out of my driveway, I want to hit every street and there better not be a pothole in it. That's what I care about. And the parents that come and drop off their children in their cars, they don't want to be hitting potholes either. So I'm expecting that it's going to be properly funded. And in this case, I completely support um, this, this appeal. And I think that we need to properly fund our paving and we need to stop arguing about it. Thank you. Further questions or comments from anyone who has not spoken to the item yet? And is, is there any member who has not yet spoken to the item that wants to speak to the item? Uh, Ms. Marmion. Thank you. Sheila Marmion, Board of Finance. I just wanted to get up and, and um, say a few words. Um, Mr. Flynn presented um, uh, some slides tonight. Um, I just want to be clear that I, I don't know who else saw the slides. I did not. I'm a, I'm a member of Board of Finance and some of it was presented as if it was from the perspective of the Board of Finance and just to be clear, um, it's not my perspective. Um, there was one point on those slides that I think we should talk about. Um, he said there's a misperception that we're trying to micromanage uh, the departments, which I, uh, I have to say I found somewhat disingenuous because it was followed by a slide that <laughs> seemed to attempt to get to micromanaging the Department of Public Works. Um, it, was under the, it was a slide that said Board of Finance considerations. Um, one of the points in there was that um, the concern that DPW presented an inconsistent budget request every year. And 
that's true but the issue that mr bartlett has clearly explained is that weather changes every year the utility costs have definitely changed and as he very eloquently described the state and the uncertainty that that presented with us last year also affected his budget so i think we have to really understand that um i don't want to micromanage their budget i respect the work they do and i think they need this additional money so i support this appeal thank you further questions or comments from the members has that, anyone that has not spoken to the item that wishes to speak to the item representative wall Jay Walk, Jay Walk District 5. Um, I have a question through you, Mr. Moderator, to uh, Mr. Bartlett. Um, so, board member of the Board of Finance, Sheila Marmion, brought up a good point. I didn't hear tonight about what weather does to roads, which we all know. So, the question is, did a lot of this roads put you back from Storm Sandy and from the last storm we had with the flooding from the Rooster River? Um, did this set you back and more money was needed for those type of roads that you didn't foresee this was going to happen? I mean, we're going to have more storms. So um, the 500000 that we want to keep, my friends from the other side of the aisle want to keep, in contingency, I'm finding really hard to, 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 to accept that. It's like not trusting these people with the money. It's like saying, well, I'm going to keep the 500000 in contingency, and you better show me what you're going to do with this money. And I totally disagree with that. So back to the question, I'll let Mr. Bartlett answer. Again, weather impacts us, but if I was to stand here and say, because we had Superstorm Sandy, you know, it wiped out our budget, no, no, that's, I can't say that. What I can say, last September, I think it was 25th, eight inches of rain fell that night. Rooster River left its banks. We already repaired Lule Manor Drive off of Valley Road, Bennett Street off of Stratfield Road. That was impacted in our regular operating budget. We have over $300,000 earmarked for not the budget I put in front of you at 2.7, but the following year. And that is for roads directly impacted by those floods as we're gonna go in there, improve the drainage and reconstruct those roads. Mother Nature has an impact on our roads on a daily basis. Going back to Joe's presentation, the sun rays, they're impacting the quality of the asphalt. Moisture impacts it. Frost in the winter with a thaw in the spring. So yes, Mother Nature is a contributing factor. No, I can't stand here today and say one storm wiped us out, but there's certainly evidence, again, with the recent floods of September of 2018, two roads already fixed, 307,000 earmarked for next year's budget. So yeah, it's an impact. Thank you, so I'm in support of this. Thank you. Further questions or comments from anyone who has not already spoken to the issue? Seeing that anyone who has already spoken and would like to speak again, Chairman Flynn. Most important thing, I'll be brief. Uh, I just want to address the whole micromanagement thing. It's not micromanagement to expect the town department to explain the basis on which it plans to spend. One is one of the largest non-personnel items, line items in the budget. It's exactly what the taxpayers expect the Board of Finance to do on their behalf. Thank you. I think I missed a couple of uh, Board of Finance members over there. Um, Board of Finance member Liz Zazima, do you want to come up?
Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good evening, Liz Esma, Board of Finance, and, and that was the perfect uh, comment to follow because this is not a contingent expense. What Mr. Flynn, Chairman Flynn just said is exactly what we have tonight. We have new information. We have a plan. We have details. These are now expenses that belong in the budget. And what we should be doing is allowing the experts to decide what they need and how to spend it and not the Board of Finance. And many of the comments made during the presentation do not reflect my opinion. They did, they, I had no participation in it, did not see it. And I will say for the record, as was demonstrated tonight, according to Robert's rules, it is a violation to question the motives, the competency, and the, um, to claim that either the first selectman or other members of this town administration, including the, the DPW, are somehow concocting a plan that d is not based on actual need and reality. And I stand in favor of stopping those discussions when they happen. Thank you. Further discussion or comments? Mr. Matola, Board of Finance. Uh, thank you. John Matola, I'm on the Board of Finance. Um, the, the, way I, the way I saw how things went down at our meeting about a month or so ago was there, there, was, a, there was some concern um, that about a year or so ago, Scott, when you were presenting your budget, I think uh, uh, you, after you know, long, many, many questions, you said you were okay with the funding I think it was about 1.5 million bucks that year. And, um, and so we fast forward to what happened at our meeting. Several members of our board thought that what Scott was saying was that I'm fine with that figure. And I'm fine with that figure going forward. And that, you know, all of a sudden this year, we're asking for $2.7 million. And that was the concern or, or, or questions that they had. Well, from my, my perspective, uh, when Scott gave his presentation uh, a, year, a year or so ago during that budgetary uh, uh, session and season, it, it was pretty clear to me that the $1.5 million wasn't sufficient, that he wasn't saying that's okay, I'm going to be good with that type of number going forward. What he was saying is that because of the tough budgetary times that we've been undergoing over the last two or three years, he could, he could deal with that figure for this particular year. Um, and it was always my understanding through our discussions on the board, I thought it was made clear by the first selectman, that at some point we were going to try to catch up. And, and that's how I saw it this time around, the, the, the $2.7 million. It's, it's, it's kind of catching up for not doing what we should have been doing over the last few years. I always thought that there was a plan in place. Um, and now we're trying to, trying to catch up. Um, now, I, I have to speak to this because people are probably looking at me, then why did you vote the way you voted that night? And I, and I did vote to put $500,000 in the contingency because it was represented that that money would be used for paving. But as many of you have said so far, there's no guarantee. Uh, I was concerned that if we had a $700,000 cut and there was nothing put anywhere, even in a contingency where it said that it could be used for paving. I was concerned that you know, we, would, we would have a difficult situation. But um, I'm, you're not going to insult my feelings if you vote to restore this. Um, I can tell you that right now. Um, um, and, um, and I think it's, it's, you should be concerned that because there's been a representation that the $500,000 will be used for paving, there's no guarantee. Uh, we all know that. So thank you for the few minutes. Further questions or comments from anybody on the body? Seeing none, is there anyone from the public that wishes to comment on the item? Thank you. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll come back to the body. Um, so again, this is the motion is to sustain the appeal. It's to hear the appeal. So a yes vote sustains the appeal and restores the money. A no vote. Um, rejects the appeal and the money is not put in. So yes for the 700000 being added. No, it stays out. We will do a roll call vote.
Steve Cesare? No. David Fogel? No. Nancy Lefkowitz? Yes. Amy O'Shea? No. Bill Gerber? Yes. Aaron Lopez? Yes. Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Perham? Yes. Heather Dean? Yes. Alex Durrell? No. Matt Jacobs? Yes. Sharon Pastilli? Yes. Alice Kelly? Yes. Phil Pierce? Yes. Bonnie Rotelli? No. Marcy Spolier? Yes. Josh Garsquaw? Yes. Joe Siebert? Yes. Ruth Smay? Yes. Jay Wolf? Yes. Matt Ambrose? Yes. Steve Barrett? Yes. Hannah Gale? Yes. Lisa Haiti? Yes. Lauren Bovey? Yes. Mark McDermott? Yes. Jill Vergara? Yes. Karen Wackerman? Yes. Pamela Iacono? No. Christine Messina? No. Peter Tellman? No. Brian Farnan? No. Drew Georgiadis? Yes. Doreen Heron? No. Margaret Horton? Yes. Sam Cargill? No. Michael Hurley? No. Frank Catisse? No. Eric Sunman? No. The vote is 14 no, 25 yes. The motion fails because it requires a two-thirds majority. Um, item three, to consider and act upon self-supporting funds in the amount of $5,714,732 for the Water Pollution Control Authority for the fiscal year of July 1, 2019 through June 30, 2020. Is there a motion to approve, moved by Representative Dean, seconded by Representative Wackerman. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Item four, to consider and act upon self-supporting funds in the amount of $173,668 for the Regional Fire Training School for the fiscal year of July 1, 2019 through June 30, 2020. Is there a motion to approve? Move by Representative Bove, seconded by Representative Lopez. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, is there any comment from the public? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Item five, to consider and act upon proposed appropriations in the amount of $316,941,739 for the fiscal year of July 1, 2019 through June 30, 2020, as recommended by the Board of Finance for any lawful purpose. This one's the budget, guys. <laughs> is there a motion to approve? Moved by Representative Dean, seconded by Representative Spoliar. Is there any discussion on this item? Representative Wackerman. Mr. Moderator, I was going to ask if we could have a um, caucus, if I could call a caucus. You may. Okay. So we will recess for 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Please be seated. I'm calling the meeting back to order. Please be seated. We're calling the meeting back to order. The meeting is being called back to order. Please be seated. All right, we will return to the item before the body, which is item five, the uh, bu annual budget for the town of Fairfield. Is there any discussion on this item? Representative Wackerman. Karen Wackerman, District 7. Um, I move to reduce the contingency line by $500,000 to $328,865. Is there a second for the motion, Representative Dean? Can you, you can speak to it. Okay, thanks. 
Um, the reason for this is we, the uh, paving was just voted down and there's absolutely no guarantee that this amount in contingency will be used for paving. And also the, the practice has to stop of the Board of Finance putting things into contingency to control where they go rather than just letting um, the first selectman and the Board of Selectmen set the budget. So um, I hope that we can reduce this and um, I know the Department of Public Works will do their usual excellent job with less money as they've done many years before, um, but this is important to, to remedy. Further discussion on the motion before the body. Representative Hurley. Michael Hurley, RTM District 10. I'm, I'm just absolutely shocked uh, about this motion. For over two hours, we heard the Democrat majority say how important it was for this money to be allocated for paving. Now, they're taking it out of contingency. The Board of Finance has gone on record stating once they get a plan, and if they're satisfied with the plan, the money will go back into paving. Secondly, now I hear that this, this theme about micromanaging. The Board of Finance shouldn't micromanage. They shouldn't micromanage. Well, you know what? This motion is about micromanaging the statutory rights of the Board of Finance. I think it's wrong. I think it's a huge mistake. And I think it's one of the biggest examples of double speak I've ever heard on the RTM. Further discussion on the item? Representative Pacilli. <coughs> Sharon Pastilli, District 3. Um, in response to Mr. Hurley's comments, um, we made very clear at the beginning of the meeting that um, our, the path forward to restoring paving was to vote in favor of uh, the amendment to uh, bring the budget number back to 2.7. And there is no guarantee once we put the 500,000 into the contingency fund that it's going to be used for paving. So. We wanted it to be a line item that is specifically given to the head of the Department of Public Works to spend money, which historically, you know, they've done a great job managing and they deserve the ability to manage their budget. So it is not a case of double speak. We are very clear up front what our intentions were. And so we don't want the management of the budget to fall, you know, in a spot where like the, the executive, the, the first selectman deserves to be able to manage the budget not um, you know, an earmark in the contingency fund. And if it's that important, then it's the 2.7 should have been restored. Further discussion on the item? Representative Iacono. Pamela Iacono, District 8. What a sad turn of events for the town of Fairfield. And for the audience at home that can't hear, they're smirking and laughing. I ran for Fairfield. I ran to serve my constituents. Five members, really eight, committed to putting the money into paving. Three of them sort of reneged on that tonight. But five of them are still committed to putting the money to paving. But in the effort to prove some kind of ridiculous political point, and by the way, the meeting was launched with a threat. Do what we want and keep it here or we're gonna take it out on the back end. How is that good for Fairfield? I voted with $500,000 that I knew was going into paving because there are five people who went on record and unless we're calling them all liars, that's where it was going. And now, even though we heard this whole collective argument about the importance of paving, to prove a philosophical point and to be, quite frankly, political, we're going to pull it out. So when I tell my neighbor why their road's not going to be paved, I'm going to tell them because, you know what? A group of people decided that they wanted to make a political statement about who should control the money and not whether or not a road got paved. And that's sad. 
That is so sad for where we are. It is so divisive that this is what we're doing. This is for our neighbors. This is for our roads. What, what are you doing? I am ashamed right now to be on this body. I can't even believe we are having this discussion. I have never seen this level of political discourse for our friends and neighbors. Stop it. We are not at the national level where they are in Washington. We are for friends, we are for neighbors, we are for Fairfield. I urge you to turn this down. I urge you to pave our roads. I urge you to, sit, to do what you wanted to do in the first place and not make some political point. Further discussion? From, any, from anyone who hasn't spoken to the item already? Representative Lopez? Erin Lopez, District 2. Um, I've been on this body for not a very long time uh, to understand how things work. Uh, I do remember an argument two years ago where I believe this, we were completely on opposite sides where we were, the Democrats were fighting to keep money in the contingency and the Republicans were cutting it. And there was no discussion of, well, we're not cutting the libraries because it's contingency. You don't know where that money is going to go. So I believe that we should not be putting this money into contingency and not knowing where it's going to go and adding that to the tax burden of our neighbors in Fairfield without a clear idea of where it's going to go. Yes, it was told to us that it would be put into paving, but the contingency is a certain amount of money and it's not a line item budget. And if this was a line item budget, we would know exactly what was going to happen to it. So I believe we should not be putting this as a tax burden on the people of Fairfield without a clear reason. For the discussion on the item, Representative Heron. Mr. Moderator, move to call the question. There's been a motion to call the question. Is there a second? Seconded by Rep uh, Representative Iacono. Um, again, this requires a two thirds majority. We'll do a roll call vote. Steve Cherry? No. David Fogel? Yes. Nancy Lefkowitz? No. Amy O'Shea? Yes. Bill Gerber? No. Aaron Lopez? Yes. Eric Newman? No. Cindy Perham? No. Heather Dean? No. Alex Durrell? Yes. Matt Jacobs? No. Sharon Pastilli? No. Alice Kelly? No. Bill Pierce? Pass. <coughs> Bonnie Rotelli? Pass. <coughs> I'm sorry, you call. Pass. Thank you. Marcy Spolier? No. Jess Garskoff? No. Joe Siebert? No. Ruth Smay? No. Jay Wolk? No. Matt Ambrose? No. Steve Barrett? No. Hannah Gale? No. Lisa Havey? No. Lauren Bovey? No. Mark McDermott? No. Jill Vergara? No. Karen Wackerman? No. Pamela Iacono? Yes. Christine Messina? Yes. Pete Talman? Yes. Brian Farnan? Yes. Drew Georgiatis? No. Dorian Heron? Yes. Margaret Horton? No. Sam Cargill? Yes. Michael Hurley? No. Frank Batiste? Yes. Eric Sunman? Yes. Bill Pierce? Yes. Bonnie Rotelli? Yes. So the vote is 15 yes, 24 no, so the motion fails because um, it requires a two-thirds majority. Is there further discussion on the item, which is a motion to reduce the contingency line by $500,000? Representative Jacobs. Matt Jacobs, District 3. I want to be very clear about what's happened here tonight. We are voting to cut contingency, very specifically. Me, 
the entire Democratic caucus earlier tonight voted to increase the paving budget by $700,000. Characterizing us as against paving is completely incorrect and unfair. We are voting now to cut contingency. We are not voting to cut paving. Let us understand that for what it is. We already voted to increase the paving budget up $700,000. Right now, we're cutting contingency and we're cutting taxes. Thank you. Further discussion on the item from anyone who has not already spoken to the item? All right. Any discussion from anybody? Representative Iacono? Mr. Moderator, through you to the first selectman. Mr. First Selectman, how much money would be left in contingency and how much of that is dedicated to labor contracts? Contractual obligations. It would be best if the, the Chief Fiscal Officer answered that. Because sure. I'm just asking what All right, thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor. My question is if we reduce the $500,000 out of contingency, the remainder of the money, is that labeled for contractual obligations and labor contracts? 300000 What is that money earmarked for? Uh, it's the normal contingency that the town votes for pretty much every year. It used to be 400000 A couple years ago, it got switched to about 300000 is the money and any of that money earmarked to go to labor negotiations, contracts, obligations, things that are about to be paid out? I thought your question was what was after labor? No. Oh, with labor, 328000 So if you want to reduce the labor contracts in town, go ahead and make your cut. Because if you cut the $500,000, it's coming out of paving. Further discussion on the item? Representative Wackerman. Um, through you, Mr. Moderator, um, the first selectman, can you respond to that? Or Mr. Mayor, um, I, we, I was under the impression that the contingency, that you can't actually earmark anything in the contingency. You can just sort of have a plan, but can you address that? I just, I just want to clarify for the record that the motion before the body is to reduce the contingency line by $500,000 to $328,865. The, the budget that's before you today, the contingency budget, is for $828,000 uh, total. Of that $825,000, at the Board of Finance meeting, 500, 000, the original budget uh, recommended by the First Selectman and the Board of Selectmen was $328,000. The Board of Finance added $500,000 with a verbal commitment that $500,000 would be earmarked for paving and only paving. Now, obviously, if there was some emergency that came up, a storm sandy or something when the money was needed, that verbal commitment would probably be adjusted. But that's what was the purpose of that $500,000. So if the $500,000 is reduced, then there'd be $328,000. $300,000 for normal contingency, extra snow removal, you know, um, just miscellaneous activity, the negative issues that might come up. The twenty-eight thousand dollars. There's no. Uh, there's only one labor contract that will be expired entering the year, so the twenty-eight thousand dollar number is a reasonable number for that agreement. Is that? Um, thank you. So I guess I, I'm maybe reiterating a point that was already made, but. Uh, to suddenly have a passionate plea for paving after this two-hour conversation we had when we could have voted for a $700,000 increase for paving on the, as a line item where it should belong is a little frustrating. But um, we need to stop this practice of putting money into contingency for various things. Things need to be allocated as they should be in the budget. Thank you. 
Representative Georgiatis. Drew Georgiatis, District 9. I'd like to say as an elected member of this town that I respect every single person who has been elected to any board because we all work hard, we are selected by our constituents and therefore we should respect one another and we should always um, just treat each other as, you know, as the elected officials that we are. I would never deem to condescend to someone, I would never scold anybody because we are all elected officials. So the point of order is well taken, please direct your comments to the item before the body. I'd like to say that I'm going to vote um, for the, um, the um, thing that is up now, just um, to say that the uh, chairman of the Board of Finance um, and the me other members of the Board of Finance, specifically the chairman, said that he was giving the DPW what they requested. They requested $2 million. He said that they have, um, Mr. Walsh had said that they always gave them what they wanted and they asked for $2 million and that they didn't want more than $2 million. So um, I'm going to support the Board of Finance and the Chairman and what he asked for and that was what they requested and that was the $2 million. Thank you very much. Further discussion from our members? Representative Wackerman. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to call a caucus again, if I may. Sorry. Can we make it five minutes? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we're going to recess for five minutes. Everyone, we're calling the meeting back to order. Please be seated. Okay, the item still before the body is a motion to reduce the contingency line by $500,000 to $328,865. Is there any further discussion on the motion presently before the body? Representative Icona. Mr. Moderator, through you to Mr. Michael Iantelo, would you be in favor of this? Um, well, it's a difficult position to put me in, but yes, we'd always request additional paving funds. When we could get them, we said we, we, we could use the additional 500000 and that's the correct answer. Further discussion on this item? Representative Vergara. Jill Vergara, District 7. Mr. Moderator, through you to Mr. Michelangelo. Um, do you think that you should be managed by the first selectman or the Board of Finance? Keep in mind who's in the room. Point of order, Mr. Moderator, that's a personnel question that I think is unfair to ask an employee. So I think I think the question is res with respect to this motion before the body, which is where the five hundred thousand dollars goes in the budget, whether it goes in the, the line item paving or whether it goes in contingency. Contingency is approved by the board of finance. I'm gonna allow the question. I understand the point of order, but I'm gonna allow the question. Um, I asked Mr. Michelangelo whether he wanted to be managed by the first selectman or the Board of Finance. And, and my only comment to that is, you know, I think that uh, I answered all boards. So I appeared before the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and the RTM. Uh, never, never ducked a question or or missed the meeting, so. Um, 
I'll alter my question and um, ask this of the first selectman, whether he thinks this is appropriate to, be ha to have the Board of Finance manage his department heads in this way? I think from a process point, uh, the simplest way to have a budget is to have a, the dollars and the line items. That's very clear as to what it's getting spent on, what it's getting approved. It lets this body vote on that. Either vote to support it or vote to cut it if you don't think we should be spending that much money on, on those functional areas. I think contingencies set up for specific reasons. Uh, one is the normal contingency, those unexpected costs, and I think that, uh, and certainly we do uh, need a place to put our uh, labor, labor contract uh, allocations in there. Uh, from a standpoint of this, simply if the any department, any board, uh, even this board, wants a more detailed plan, please, I, I know our public works guys would love to spend the next two hours talking about <laughs> paving. Uh, they'd happy to make a return engagement and talk about paving and make sure that anything you need to know going into the budget process, uh, they're clear on. And I think that goes for the Board of Selectmen, and it also goes for the Board of Finance. Further discussion on the motion before the body? Seeing none, is there anyone? Oh, sorry. Representative McDermott. Mark McDermott, District 7. Um, Alex, you're laughing. <laughs> um, through you, Mr. Moderator, to Mr. Michelangelo. If you had your druthers, would you prefer the $700,000 on the paving line in your budget, or would you rather see the $500,000 in contingency? <laughs> Same question that was asked. Would you prefer to have the money on your line item for paving and not in contingency? Whether it's five hundred thousand so, dollars. You, you, so the point. All right, everyone. There's been one point of order. Right? It's enough. I don't need ten points of order. It's from ten different people. Um, so the item before the body is whether we should reduce contingency by five hundred thousand um, dollars. A prior vote on a different line, I don't think is, you know, how he feel, felt about that vote, I don't think is relevant to this question. So I do think that point of order is well taken. If you can pose your question so that it relates to whether or not he, is, he supports a cut to contingency for $500,000, I'll allow that. Well, I think he answered that. He'd, 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 he'd prefer to take the money wherever he can get it, if he can get it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing I will just say then, uh, I'm in favor of cutting the $500,000 in contingency. Uh, we sat here two years ago where uh, the Republican uh, caucus cut $825,000 from contingency that was allegedly earmarked for the library, new trucks, um, some paving. So. I don't, I don't believe that this money is, uh, could, uh, this end money is contingent upon anything. It could end up in, in any line item in the budget where we are falling short. Um, Mr. Mayor mentioned we have, what, a $3 million surplus this year? We gave uh, $600,000 out of last year's surplus for paving. So I think we're in good shape if we cut this out of the, uh, out of the budget. Thank you. Further discussion on this item? Representative Hurley. Michael Hurley, RTM District 10. Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Moderator, I have a question for the first selectman. Go ahead and ask. <laughs> you, you may proceed. Are you supportive of this cut to contingency, which guarantees a $500,000 reduction in paving? Do 
this. Um, actually, it doesn't guarantee that. Let's, let's take it from the top. One, uh, as was pointed out, Mr. Merritt, uh, we've got a $3 million surplus going into this year. What we did last year and where the 600000 came from was in September, we can allocate that, that money to where we need it. We don't have to let it fall through all the way to surplus. The Board of Finance has stated uh, that they're in favor of getting this money to, to Public Works. Here's the magic. We cut this now because we can lower the tax rate by doing that. The $3 million in surplus that we get to reallocate in September, we've already taxed the people for. So by lowering the taxes now, that's the best use of our tax rates and our mill rates, and that's the best thing to do for the residents. So thank you, Mike, for giving me a chance to answer that. I have to say that I disagree with the first selectman. I mean, the entire Democrat caucus argued for two hours of the importance of putting $700,000 in for paving, and now you have an opportunity, you have 500000 which is earmarked for paving, that now the Democrats want to cut. Again, I don't get it, flip-flopping, double-speak, call it whatever you want. Further discussion on the item, Representative Jacobs? Matt Jacobs, District 3. As I previously stated, this is a cut to contingency. We already voted entirely in favor in our caucus to restore money to paving. This is not a cut to paving, regardless of how you want to characterize it. This is a cut to contingency. That is it. Thank you. Further discussion on the item? Representative Gerber. Bill Gerber, District 2. Uh, I just want to make it clear why I'm going to support this. I believe in the sanctity of the process. I believe that we should respect what is the intention for each department, for each board to do. I believe this, what the Board of Finance did violated that. I, I know they, they don't believe that. They think they're, it's in their right. Uh, you can stretch what, you, what your roles and responsibilities are you know, we see it all the time at the federal level. Someone else just brought up the federal level not long ago. We see people trouncing on, you know, the rights of, of other and the, the writ, you know, sanctity of what other uh, bodies uh, are typically do. I believe that doesn't necessarily mean do it, and I don't think they should have done it. So I, you know, I'm willing to actually stick my neck out and say the sanctity of the process to me is more important long term. I don't want a million dollars next year. In the following year, different, li different line items. You know, it, it's not the role of the Board of Finance to do that. So, you know, I just have to, you know, put my foot down and say, well, you know, so be it. Like, if, if the sanctity of the process for the good of the town long term is, is you know, I'm going to cut it. So, thank you. Further discussion on the item, Representative Gale. <laughs> So through, sorry. It's on, it's on. through you, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to direct a question to Mr. Walsh, if he is still here, based on what... I don't believe he's here. He's not here any longer. So I guess I'm going to have to direct it to someone else on the Finance Committee who... There's no one from the Board of Finance. They're not here. So I guess I'll speak to what I heard <laughs> when uh, it was very confusing. You know, I'm. I'm not completely privy to everything that's going on here, but what I understood from Mr. Walsh's statement was that on some level he was punishing the DPW for what he saw was... Okay. Point of order is well taken. You, you're not supposed to question the motivations of somebody. All right. I, I'm, I'm not questioning his motivations. That's not my intention. My intention was simply what he said was that there had not been a proper preparation of the requests. And so, therefore, the Finance Committee had decided to put the funds into contingency so that they could control it, is what I believe I heard stated in seventh grade terms. So I guess my opinion is, is that 
this is not the forum where some sort of um, disagreement over the preparation of a budget should be played out. The fact that we've been here for three hours because of a, a, a disagreement between these department heads and the way they prepared their budget proposal is just inappropriate. And so I am going to vote along with the Democratic Caucus to remove this uh, from the contingency fund simply because it seems like it should never have been placed there it, it, because it was all inappropriate leading up to that. Thank you. Further discussion from our members? From anyone who hasn't spoken? Anyone else? Representative Icona. Mr. Moderator, through you to the first selectman, if we don't need this money for paving, if we had it in surplus all along, if it was there, why did you make the appeal? Why are we here? Why did you appeal? Why did we have a two-hour conversation about this? If, if you had it, why did you do this? Simply, uh, the amount of money we have in surplus, the year's not over yet, and second, um, the money from surplus still has to be approved by the Board of Finance in order to move it into paving, so there's no guarantee it actually gets there. The 2.7 that uh, was voted on earlier, am I allowed to speak to that since that was part of the question? I'll, I'll, I'll allow it to the extent it really <laughs> The, the 2.7 that I'm was remind everybody it's almost 11. the appeal was about was to put it in paving so we all knew where it was and all the taxpayers and everybody who reads the budget would know where it is. As soon as you put it someplace else and take a label off it, you have no idea what it's going to go for. We do have the money um, that uh, it appears based on Mr. Uh, Mayor's uh, initial review, though not audited certainly, uh, that will have some of this money. Uh, the Board of Finance will have an opportunity uh, to allocate that money towards paving just as they did last September for the same reason. But Mr. Moderator, you just stood here and told us we had an opportunity to lower taxes. I mean, you could have made that statement at the beginning of the meeting and not put us through this entire thing. I just I, I, at, a, at a loss as to why we are where we are right one, now. I need one point of order. And then, somebody needs to, <laughs> then somebody actually needs to articulate what the point of order is. So, they're going to do that. that they, they don't know anymore. I'll let it go. I'm All done. Right. Thank you. I'd like to call a caucus of the Republicans. Thank you. Okay. We will. Five. We're going to adjourn for five minutes. Recess for five minutes. Please be seated. We're calling the meeting back to order. So the motion before the body is a, still a motion to reduce the contingency line by $500,000 to $328,865. Is there further discussion on this item? Representative Wackerman. So there's a point of information on whether we have to suspend the, suspend the rules. So Rule 36 um, precludes us from starting a new item after 11. So we've already started this item. But if we are going to go past 1130, which I really hope we're not, um, we will have to suspend Rule 36, which prohibits us from having further discussion past 1130. If we don't suspend that rule, we have to come back here tomorrow night. <laughs> so let's, let's finish by 1130 so we don't have to have that discussion. Any comment on the motion before the body? Seeing none, we'll go to the public for public comment. Seeing none, we'll come back to the body for a vote on the motion, which is a motion to reduce the contingency line by $500,000 to $328,865. We will use a roll, roll call vote. Steve Cesari? No. David Fogel? No. Nancy Lefkowitz? Yes. Amy O'Shea? No. Bill Gerber? Yes. Aaron Lopez? Yes. Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Perro? Yes. Heather Dean? Yes. Alex Durrell? Yes. No. Matt Jacobs? Yes. Sharon Pastilli? Yes. Yeah. Alice Kelly? Yes. Phil Pierce? Yes. Bonnie Ritelli? No. Marcy Spolier? Yes. Josh Garskoff? Yes. 
Joe Siebert? Yes. Ruth Smay? Yes. Jay Wolk? Yes. Matt Ambrose? Yes. Steve Barrett? Yes. Hannah Gale? Yes. Lisa Havey? Yes. Lauren Bovey? Yes. Mark McDermott? Yes. Jill Bergara? Yes. Karen Wackerman? Yes. Pam Iacono? No. Christine Messina? No. Peter Tolman? No. Brian Farnan? No. Drew Georgiatis? Yes. Doreen Heron? No. Margaret Horton? Yes. Sam Cargill? No. Michael Hurley? No. Frank Petit? No. Eric Sundman? So the motion to cut continue, reduce the contingency line passes 25 to 15. Um, so the item before the body now is the uh, annual town budget as reduced by that prior motion. Is there any further? Twenty-five to fourteen. Um, is there any further discussion on the item before the body? <laughs> it's it's our one thousandth motion. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Vergara. Jill Vergara, District 7. Um, I'd like to make a motion to reduce 25000 from the capital line item 57000 under the waterfront and marina budget. This is the so-called sinking fund established by the Board of Finance. Um, I oppose the Board of Finance's establishment of a sinking fund because I don't believe that the Board of Finance has the authority to establish such a fund. And I think it represents an overreaching by the Board of Finance into executive powers. Under the town charter, the Board of Selectmen are the executives of the town, with the first selectman being the town's chief executive officer, charged with the administration of all departments and officers. The first selectman works with the heads of the town departments in crafting his annual budget and setting policy priorities. The town's park and rec director specifically stated at committee that neither he nor the park and rec commission requested the sinking fund. Indeed, park and rec members who are charged as the policy making body for park and rec were not aware of this new line item addition until just recently and many on the commission seem not to understand what purpose the sinking fund serves and how it will be used or how it will operate the board of finance is not a policy making body they are not fairfield's executive body the park and rec commission is the policy making body in this area and the first selectman is our chief executive I understand that the marina has deficiencies that need to be corrected, and I want to invest more in this important asset, but this is not the way to do it. This is a slippery slope that I am not willing to go down. Process is sacred and is the path to good governance. I'm not willing to veer off that path. Is there a second to the motion? The motion is to reduce um, the capital line in the waterfront in marina by $25,000, seconded by Representative Dean. Is there any discussion on this item? Representative Iacona. Um, Mr. Moderator, through you to whoever can answer the question, I'm not um, just procedurally so that uh, or we're eliminating $25,000 from the marina budget then, essentially? The motion is to reduce the Capital line 57000 in the waterfront and marina budget. So that so we're so we're reducing the marina budget by twenty five thousand dollars. The line in the budget that is capital. But that's the motion before the body. The motion before the body is to reduce reduce the capital line twenty five thousand dollars, item fifty four fifty seven thousand um, in. The waterfront and in so marina. essentially, we're reducing the marina budget by twenty-five thousand dollars. Is there somebody that can answer that question for me, Mr. Mayor? Are we reducing the the capital? Are we reducing the marina budget by twenty-five thousand dollars? The motion. 
motion, as I understood it, is a reduction is a request to reduce the capital budget of the marina uh, budget by $25,000. Yes. Okay, so this is $25,000 less than the marina needs. Um, we've had multiple, multiple, multiple emails from boat owners, slip holders, um, people who are on the wait list trying to get into the marina, uh, people who need are in desperate need of repairs, people who are looking to replace frog hooks, a constituent who wrote and um, fell into the water, couldn't get back up, safety issues. This was a move made in an effort to try and address that. Um, and now we're going to take money which was moved by the Board of Finance to be earmarked to actually help do some of those improvements and we're going to now actually give the department as a whole less money. It, it, I, I'm wondering, Mr. Moderator, through you to the mover and the seconder, can you make your point that you don't like this process and ask that it be revisited but not reduce their budget because they really need the $25,000? I see Mr. Calabrese in the back of the room through you, Mr. M Moderator. M Mr. Calabrese, do you want to address whether or not you would like to see this department reduced by 25000 or should I direct this to DPW? I'm not exactly sure who the owner of the marina is and where the management goes, but I know these guys are looking for every penny they want, so I'd rather we not zero out $25,000 that they really need. Well, good evening. As much as I'd like to phone a friend or uh, extend some rules or call a caucus, uh, I'm going to do my best up here. Uh, so this money wasn't earmarked for anything. Um, this was, as you guys all heard during the Board of Finance meeting, uh, $25,000 essentially to help us you know, put some money back into the marina immediately. If that money wasn't spent at the end of the fiscal year, it would roll into what we call that sinking fund. Um, so right now that money is not currently earmarked for any special project. I hope that answers the question. So, but essentially, are you comfortable with reducing your budget by $25,000 or will this, as you mentioned, be reallocated right back into the marina? Um, I would have to address those, uh, you know, the priorities with uh, DPW and Joe Michelangelo and his department and find out um, where we could use that money immediately. Again, we would try to use that money uh, as best we could to make immediate impact on the marina. So I, would I like the money? Yes, but. I really, we all sat in these budget meetings and talked about maintenance and we're not investing in maintenance. We're not doing the maintenance we need. I really think this is an area where we really shouldn't be taking this money out points well taken that you don't like the way this is done. Again, I just don't think this is the way we should be doing this when we really need these dollars to do things. So I urge you to vote against this. I urge you to reconsider the motion. Do a sense of the body that you don't like the way this is set up and you won't support it going in, forward in the future. Um, but I would not uh, advocate taking this money out this way. Further, <clears throat> further discussion on the motion? Representative Gerber? Bill Gerber, District 2. Um, I think we all realize the marina needs a lot of work. We want to put a lot of money into the marina. We're looking forward to seeing the plans for the marina and approving those plans as quickly as possible to get, you know, the renovations needed. $25,000, I mean, come on. What, what is that? Putting $25,000 at the last minute that no one asked for it, it wasn't earmarked, just in case something comes up? Well, you know, I think there's a lot of doublespeak tonight, and this, I think, kind of, this takes the cake for me. So I really hope that no one votes against this, because this, this was not a well-thought-out addition to the, um, to the marina's budget. It's not going to help anyone. Maybe they'll buy some, you know, snacks or something. I, I, you know, it's just such a low rent attempt to try to put lipstick on a pig that I, I just honestly think 
that what we need to do with the marina is get something serious going quickly and get it done fast, and I think that's going to happen now. There's a lot of momentum behind it. The marina needs work. We all think so. Thank you. Further discussion? Representative Dean? Through you, Mr. Uh, Representative Dean, District 3, through you, Mr. Moderator, to uh, Mr. Calabrese. Um, do you, I, I understand that there are some significant plans for the arena, I'm sorry, for the marina, not the arena, the marina, would, and uh, would you mind elaborating more about what those long-term plans are and the price tag for it, please? Can you relate the motion, can you relate the question to the motion before the body, to, to the body? I want to compare the 25000 to what we have coming down the pike and um, see if this is worthwhile to do or not. So the question is on the financial magnitude of the uh, expected plan? Yes. As compared to, okay. Yes, thank you. Um, there's a, a wide range of plans, um, basically anything from uh, roughly a million dollars to eight million dollars. All right, uh, and in that money, what are your, can you just give us a kind of little scope of what those exciting plans are? $7 million, that's a lot of money. Um, I wish I could really expand upon it, but um, there's not much to say at this point. Uh, the, the subcommittee has been meeting for uh, the last year and a half, two years, um, and they have looked at several different options from really replacing in kind what is at the marina to a complete marina redesign. Uh, no plan has been uh, set in place yet or voted on. Uh, they're still in, they just went through a public hearing uh, process the other uh, couple weeks ago. Uh, so I'm really not comfortable saying this is what we're going to be doing when we don't have a plan in place. All right, thank you very much. Well, given that there's no plan yet for the, the large the scope project and uh, there's no plan for the 25,000, it seems to me that waiting until that bigger plan comes about and how significant it will impact us and wh what great ideas are coming forward, that I will be supporting the, um, the cut. Thank you. Further discussion on this motion? Representative Vergara? Jill Vergara, District 7. I think it just needs to be clarified that this line item was created out of thin air. It did not exist. So almost to, to for my motion to be this reduction is, is sort of goes against what actually happened in this process of the Board of Finance creating this line item out of thin air. Anthony didn't even request this money. Um, the, Park and Rec Commission doesn't know how it will function and how they're going to use it. For me, that means that it can be abused, there is a lack of transparency, and there's a lack of accountability. And all of that says to me we shouldn't be doing this. Further discussion on the item? Seeing none, we'll go to the public for any public comment. Seeing none, we'll come back to the body for a vote. The motion before the body is to reduce the capital line in the waterfront and marina budget by $25,000 to zero. Um, it's 57000 in the waterfront and marina, and we will do a roll call vote. Steve Cesari? No. David Fogel? No. Nancy Lefkowitz? Yes. Amy O'Shea? No. Bill Gerber? Yes. Aaron Lopez? Yes. Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Perro? Yes. Heather Dean? Yes. Alex Durrell? No. Matt Jacobs? Yes. Sharon Pastilli? Yes. Alice Kelly? Yes. Phil Pierce? Yes. Bonnie Ritelli? Yes. No. Marcy Sawyer? Yes. Josh Garskoff? Yes. Joe Siebert? Yes. Ruth May? Yes. Jay Wolf? Yes. Matt Ambrose? Yes. Steve Barrett? Yes. Hannah Gale? Yes. Lisa Havey? Yes. Lauren Bovey? Yes. Mark McDermott? Yes. Jill Vergara? Yes. Karen Wackerman? Yes. Pamela Iacono? Christine Messina? No. Pete Talman? No. Brian Farnan? No. Drew Georgiatis? No. Doreen Heron? No. Margaret Horton? Yes. Sam Cargill? No. Michael Hurley? No. Frank Batiste? No. Eric Sunman? No.
So the motion carries 25 yes, 14 no. Is there any further discussion on the item before the body, which is the budget, as uh, amended by those two motions to reduce those two items? Further discussion on the budget? Um, does our CFO have an updated um, appropriation number for us? The, uh, The budget uh, after the adjustments made by this body be $316,416,739 uh, for an increase of 3.69%, a mill rate of 26.81 for an increase of 1.71% at a collection rate of 98.76%. Did you include, uh, did you say that what was the uh, tax increase was? One decimal seven one. Okay, uh, further discussion from members of the body? Could you repeat the numbers? Revised budget, 316, comma, 416, comma, 739. Three, nine. Mill rate, 26, decimal 81. 26, decimal 81. Budget increase of 3.68%. Mill rate increase of 1, decimal 71%. Got it? Any further discussion from members of the body? Seeing none, we'll go to the public for any... No discussion unless you've been recognized, please. Um, we'll go to the members of the public for any public comment. Back to the body, we'll do a roll call vote. Steve Cesari? No. David Fogel? No. Nancy Lefkowitz? Yes. Amy O'Shea? No. Bill Gerber? Yes. Aaron Lopez? Yes. Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Perham? Yes. Heather Dean? Yes. Alex Durrell? Yes. Matt Jacobs? Yes. Sharon Pastilli? Yes. Alice Kelly? Yes. Phil Pierce? Yes. Bonnie Ritelli? Yes. Marcy Spolier? Yes. Josh Garskoff? Yes. Joe Siebert? Yes. Ruth Smay? Yes. Jay Wolk? Yes. Matt Ambrose? Yes. Steve Barrett? Yes. Hannah Gale? Yes. Lisa Havey? Yes. Lauren Bovey? Yes. Mark McDermott? Yes. Jill Vergara? Yes. Karen Wackerman? Yes. Pamela Iacono? No. Christine Messina? Yes. Pete Tellman? No. Brian Farnan? No. Drew Georgiatis? Yes. Doreen Heron? Yes. Margaret Horton? Yes. Sam Cargill? No. Michael Hurley? No. Frank Fatiz? No. Eric Sundman? Budget is approved, 29 yes, 10 no. Um, there being no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by everybody. We're, we'll adjourn at 1120.